I reckon I've just had 3,000 calories there. Enjoy every every supple bite, didn't you? <laughs> I reckon I've done 1,200 max. So I'm not a bigger eater. First of all, welcome back, John. Missing last week. Nice to have you back. You're sending out a switch batter. When I'm on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Who have we got, Chris, eh? Um, we've got Leroy Leiter this week. Who's he played for? Bristol City, Redden, Middlesbrough, Swansea, Barnsley. Although it wasn't very complimentary about Barnsley. No, that was not it wasn't yeah. it? We're at, we're at the ground, aren't we? None eater. Yes. His latest club that he's at. My favourite comment last week was, I hope John raised a lot of money for his stunts in silence. Oh, the Wesley. <laughs> I just know it wasn't worth me speaking. That's all. Weren't worth, 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 worth me talking. Well, a big thanks to um, Furpler for sponsoring the episode. But should we get him in? I just want to say, KFC chips have been destroyed, ruined. I don't know if it's the salt we put on it, but not the same. There's none left. Like, there's none, <laughs> none left, but he just didn't enjoy them as much as normal. <laughs> So you listened to a few. Yeah, yeah. 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 Did you hear the one when he were digging you out for not turning up last time? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't see that one. <laughs> I'd just like to apologize. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll have a look for it. <laughs> Until got... I mentioned that how good you were your taekwondo history, <laughs> he went quiet <away> then. <laughs> oh, yeah, fucking hell, we were down there and he yeah. but, so well, I, I apologize. I think you had one to do anyway, didn't you? Yeah, yeah we had yeah, yeah. it was done good yeah, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't just you came down and no. Yeah, so I'm yeah. sorry for Don't anything look. I said. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Fucking asshole you are. <laughs> Stitch him up. Caught me by surprise then. I didn't think you were gonna come gonna come in with it. <laughs> None eaten now at the ground. Uh, cheers for having us. Do you still enjoy it? I, still, I love football. I love it. So I said to you last week, didn't I? That I think I looked at the fixtures in the National League or something. I was like, darling, and away on a Tuesday. I just could. I was out in a sweat just thinking about it. Yeah, we, don't have, we don't have to go that far. So it's all in within just the Midlands. Local. I think there's Royston, there's a three or four teams that are long trips, but you go with the lads, it's, it's good fun. It's not like the professional world, totally different. So you can enjoy it more. I was going to say, so, is that uh, yeah, a big fact that the yeah. you just yeah, you no real it. pressure? We can look forward to the game, hopefully get a result and enjoy normal life after. Do you find that tough? You know, the frustration, obviously the level that you've played at, and I presume a lot of the lads who were playing have not played at that level. Because I found it when I dropped down, you're like, why the fuck have you done that? Surely you can do that. Does it frustrate you? No, because I just feel like, especially the young lads, you can help them. Because you've been there, you've been there, done that. You know, when you see, even now, you see young, talented players, just try to change their mindset to a lot of it to, it's to do with that up the top level so you try and help them with that when you when you can't get through to them that's frustrating yeah i think i've that's found the, that that's frustrating i don't get frustrated within the game because i i go over and look after myself mm. make sure I'm, I'm performing still have that you know hunger to be out there and play football and score goals i don't get that feeling anywhere else apart from spending time with my kids um scoring goals is just best feeling in the world so as long as I enjoy that, I'll keep playing. How old are you now? 38. Still feeling fresh. fresh. Still looking oh, incredible, by the way. a strong way. word, isn't it? to say fresh. Stop sucking up, yeah. you <laughs> still, look, still looking absolutely <laughs> pristine. <laughs> but say, yeah, I, feel, I, feel, I feel good. You yeah. know how to manage your body. You know, when you're younger, you just, you just play, don't just you? Just do it. Yeah, you just get up and do it. And, uh, See, I love having my Saturdays off now. Like, my Saturdays free. Brilliant. Saturday's a football day, man. Well, yeah, you, can, <laughs> you can watch it. We're, we're in Madrid, you yeah. It's fucking fantastic. <laughs> Watch the results come But in. you can play and do that after. Yeah, you can. You, you've got rest of your life mean, for doing In the professional you? world, you can't do that. You go in there, you have to see your family and then you're not allowed to have a drink. And then I get that. That's the professional world. So you can, you can play, hopefully get a result. And it's, you know, it's still that good feeling. Going back right to the start, mate, you came over from... Came over to the UK at five from uh, from Congo. Yeah. Do you remember anything about being being over there and coming across? Yeah, I remember everything about being there. Um, I came over to Belgium first, right, and then come over. I lived in Belgium for a year then because it's Congo and Belgium are like 
they were close countries, you know what I mean? Allies. Um, yeah, Congo was, was good. I just I remember family, my brothers and that, my mum, my dad and everyone together. But well, everyone had to get out for, I don't really want to get into that because it's a long story. Yeah. And um, everyone had to get out of the country. And I came over, no passport, nothing. Literally a refugee like most people that you see coming over from struggle. And um came over, just didn't even like football when I was, I remember sitting at my auntie's house and they're watching the World Cup 94. And I just wanted to watch cartoons, Power Rangers or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a good cartoon. <laughs> Whatever it was, Power Rangers, like, <laughs> I liked at the time. And the World Cup was on, it was on every day. I was like, what's this, man? We're watching football again. <laughs> like, um, yeah, and just like growing up, being in London, learning loads of different, I didn't speak a word of English, so it's difficult. How I got about thinking now is incredible. Um, so I was speaking French. My family speaking French in Lingala all the time, so... We weren't talking English and getting about, it was a bit difficult. People couldn't say my name properly and everything like that. And yeah, so because my real name's not Leroy. So, what is yeah. it? Halleru. Halleru. Mm, yeah. Well, we'll just stick with Leroy because we'll not go to the A couple of madres in. You stick with Leroy. So, There's yeah. yeah. three more of them and struggle with yeah, Leroy. I'll tell you. Stick, <laughs> stick with Leroy. Yeah. So, so I, felt, I went down the park playing my mates. Just ran past them, scored a couple of goals. So it's a bit easy, isn't it? <laughs> and um, one of my mates, Nathan, said to me, um, you're quite good, you should take it serious. Started watching it. I'm a Chelsea fan, but I watch it right. And I was, I was like, I want to do that. I want to I celebrate like that guy. And then, you know, everyone loves Ian Wright. You know what I mean? He's just f pure, isn't he? There's nothing fake about him. And then, um, yeah, from that moment, I just focused on my football and then, you know, I went down the park when then there was no one there and just smashed the ball against the, the cricket fence that was there. Yeah. Did you find that you couldn't speak the language ever, but going down the park to play football, it's like a universal thing, isn't yeah. it? Where you don't, you don't have to speak to anybody. It's just, yeah. oh, you've got a ball, do you fancy a game? Yeah. That was was it, it that how the love yeah, came from? Yeah, the, the, didn't have to talk. And um, I've never been a, one of them in the change room giving it or that. And I like, went down and just played and then everyone's moving. Yes, yes. You know, everyone understands. Yes, you know what I mean? <laughs> you can you just feel it, don't yeah. you? You know, um, yeah, really. And you made friends, you know what I mean? And they're like, oh, we'll come down and this time tomorrow, the next, you know, the next weekend or whatever like that after school. So you made friends as well, just connecting with different people through football. That's great. That, yeah. to, to hear that football was your integration. Yeah, into mm -hmm. right. Into the community and yeah. everything. It was difficult because I was quite shy as well. Remember coming to a country where mm. you've never been before and I used to react to things a lot because <laughs> I didn't get what people were saying. I didn't know if they're angry at me or trying to be nice. So <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't speak the language, but yeah, you just, yeah. And I think when I got to about seven or eight, I could actually have a conversation and interact with people a lot better. And how old were you when you were picked up by Chelsea? Uh, 12. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I started playing football at 10. Right. Yeah, yeah. What, for a team at 10? For a team at 10, Sunday yeah. team, yeah, yeah. I was playing down the park with the lads and that, just messing about. I didn't, didn't even play for school or nothing like that. Didn't get my school team, just played with my friends on the Sunday team. When I went down the park, I played outfield. When I went to my Sunday team, I was a goalkeeper. That's the only way that I was allowed in the team because everything was sorted. The, the managers... The manager was one of the boy's son. So he's um, always, he's always one playing. of the boy's dad. Right. And his cousin played. So his, his nephew played. Oh, so and, first so and his, second name. Yes, yeah, so everything yeah. was sorted. So I got in goal. I was quite good in goal. And um, just played for a bit. And then I remember one game we just had everyone change position. I said, can I go up front? Went up front. I scored about nine. <laughs> and, I, and I never went back. He said, like, yeah, you're playing up there. <laughs> yeah, so, Put them some decals yeah. down. You don't need them anymore. So... Yeah, that's that, that my love for the game. I did love it, love it in goal, but got to the stage I was like, I'm a bit, a bit small for a keeper. So was the scouts coming to watch these? Yeah, I remember the, the game. Chelsea scout. Mm, remember the game. I was playing for Margate, and we played Tunbridge Angels. They were, they were under fourteens, but I was a uh, under thirteen playing, and I scored three and set up three. There was a Chelsea scout, scout there and a Charlton scout. They both 
when they're allowed to talk to you straight after. Mm. Um, you come on, yeah, we want to have a look at both of them. Said, I'm a Chelsea fan, so I went to Chelsea and uh, I was there for a year at Chelsea as a trialist. A year. Now I just kept turning up. <laughs> just kept turning up. Fuck's sake, it's come again. It's come, come on. Yeah, just, they, they didn't say nothing to me. They didn't say don't just come. Just pretend you can't speak English. Right? Then, no. Not for you, mate. No, no. See you next week. Yeah. No, at that point, I could speak it. I just kept turning up. I just kept turning up. Every session I was there because they had a pickup point. I was there on time, everything. Every session I was there. And then eventually they signed me as a schoolboy forms. And, and then I got all the way up to scholar and under 15s, under 16s. So year 10, year 11 the school. I was having two days off school a week to go in and train with the first team and reserves. And I was thinking, this is brilliant. Like pick you up after school and take you in to digs, go and train, you see all the first team stars and you go and train with them. And one of the days you train with everyone and the rest you train with the youth team. And I was thinking, it's brilliant. And then. I was thinking I got a chance and it got to 16s and then just one Thursday after training, um, Ted Dale, the academy manager at the time, um, pulled me into the little office in the, the training ground. Um, yeah, we're not, we're not taking you on. Um, reasons are you're a bit too little, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now looking back, Leon Knight, Colt and Cole ahead of me, Leon was two years above me. Um, Coley was one year above me. I was thinking, hang on a minute, I'm too short. But one of my best attributes is in the air. And fuck you, Leon Knight. <laughs> it's smaller than me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I did the meeting end. Well, I know you've just released me, but I'll see you Monday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Tuesday, on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, so Leon Knight is smaller than me. I was shocked. Did you know Knighty? Yeah, I know him well. I know Knighty, yes. Yeah. Strange, crazy character, isn't he? brilliant. <laughs> he doesn't hold back, does he? Ah, good worry. He's, but yeah, just unreal. Technically, in the air as well. By the way, it was, it was good in the air as well for someone that mm. small. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was a good player. My very good player, a good guy as well because you had all these big stars at the training ground. And when we finished training, we had no lift a couple of times, and um, I'm scared to ask. And Leo and I would always go, "Do you need a lift?" I was like. Hey, Drove me to the tube station, and you know, I mean, all the time. Like, like, when I couldn't get a lift, he was driving me, and uh, and um, all the big stars getting off, just ignoring you. And he was one of the ones that looked out for Took you. The time so, out. Good guy. When you got released, did you have any mentor or support there to keep you going from from family or elsewhere? I think everyone in my family were quite real to me. <laughs> they said, yeah. uh, "You're picking a career." So no chance, really. Think about something else. I was like, nah. I went to, after I got released at sixteen. I uh, worked in a petrol station for a little bit, done a bit of building work, and I was like, I ain't doing this for thirty years. <laughs> so I, it's when the internet came in. So I went online and got all the academy numbers, and so I started ringing them all up for a trial. And then I went down to um, Bristol City. Didn't even train or nothing like that. They just played in a trialist game and I was sub and uh, I was thinking well, what's the point we're playing against Cumbran in Wales yeah, yeah? and um, I came in at half time it was nil 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 I scored five and uh, Danny Wilson was watching uh, Frank Barlow yeah. was watching you know these guys yeah. well don't you um, the chairman was there so and they said sign him straight away and they pulled me literally about the Roger Bart and the guy who drove everyone, everyone around was gonna drop me at the station. Said, "Now you're staying. They want you to sign, <laughs> and that was that." So, so what did you sign at Bristol then? Did you sign YTS or did you just... I signed three year scholar? Played a year uh, under seventeens, top scorer in the whole club because they put it in the program. They put the academy scores and they put in Lever top scorer in the whole club. I was give me great confidence. Came back the second year. We all trained together. First team nineteens. We all trained together, done pre-season together. I won every single running, beat every single first team player, every 19s player, all the cross country running, the, the field runs, everything like that. And I was just on it. You know what I mean? I just, I thought, because I'm with them, I'm looking at, I remember I was looking at Lee Peacock. Is that the lunatic with the tattoo? Tattoo striker. Yeah. Look at Lee Peacock and I'm thinking, right, I've got to beat him. I've got to beat him. 
Ethan is somewhere down there. I was like, <laughs> he's one of the strikers. I was thinking, and then I, then I got in. I was like, where is everyone? I was first one in. I was the first one in. And after that, I went, it's not hard, is it? I just got to push myself. Next one, done it again, done it again. And then it came to a preseason first team game. Uh, Frank Barlow come over to me and said, you're with us today against Hereford. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to be carrying the waters or something like that. <laughs> got there. Um, blah, blah, blah. Danny Wilson, name of the team, Leroy number 17. I was like, what well, I got? Got a kit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll shoot up with the yeah, 17. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, I got a kit, man. <laughs> I'm pulling on, sitting on the bench, thinking, what's going on here? I'm a bit shocked. Like, Danny Wilson went to me, Leroy, you're going on. Huh? I said, there's half an hour to go, man. <laughs> no, I didn't say nothing, but I was thinking that. And um, <laughs> we got a penalty. I ran and got the ball. No one stopped me either. <laughs> like, like, no one stopped me. I pulled it down, scored. A couple of minutes later, scored another one, celebrating, just thinking I was playing the World Cup final. So, yeah, celebrating <laughs> you know? properly. Like, yeah, yeah. Pre pre regular penalty. Was just I was like... doing cartwheels, everything. <laughs> like, yeah, I swear down. I was, <laughs> it, was, it was the best goals of my life. There was fans there, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, playing in front of people, actually cheering, like, it's best feeling. And, yeah, from that moment, and they kept me with the first team. And I was like, I still weren't getting it. I was like, is this just like they're testing me or like, like someone teasing me here or what? And I was just like hungry for more, hungry. And Daddy Wilson was brilliant for me because he was getting stick from the fan. Play Lita, the young lad, play, play him, just put him in. But he's looking after me, you know what I mean? Because he could have just done that for himself, get results or whatever for himself. But he actually looked after me, you know what I mean? Keep you grounded. You know, he managed me well, like, and um. Did you think that at the time though? At I didn't the time think that, I, thinking, learned, I know that me. now. I know that yeah. now, like, because from experience. That time I had no clue. I don't know. I didn't know how the game went. Had you always been a good runner, you know? Or did you go away that summer and just think, I'm going to... I think it wasn't about being a good runner. It's about determination and like hunger. I had loads of it. Nothing, nothing hurt at that point. You know what I mean? So I just saw a challenge. You had Lee Matthews. I felt Lee Matthews, he looks too fat to be a footballer for me <laughs> at that time. I think he's too heavy. No disrespect, a great guy. No, no, but he, that's, that was me thinking. I was looking at... Lee Peacock, I was looking at um, Peter Beadle. Now, you remember Peter Beadle? Mm -hmm. That's the striker. He was way too big in his playing See, I think there's a lot of room still in football for big striker. I know how he played. I know how effective he was. I'm, I'm saying for what he did, you 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 could move a lot more than Peter Beadle. Fucking yeah. hell. <laughs> Are you sure you're about Peter or Jeremy <laughs> fucking Beadle here? <laughs> Where? He might be brothers, he's like, no. But yeah, honestly, and I, I was looking, I was like, I, I got to beat these guys. Mm. I got to beat these guys because they're strikers. I'm a striker. That's my challenge. And then I think that's what it was about for me. It's just, just my mindset was like, I got, even I was 17 years old, I just looked at him as just another human being like that. I got to try and be better. And that was it. So. Big thanks to Fair Play for uh, sponsoring the series once again and congratulations everybody who managed to get the fiver as expected. Christopher, with your bet. Never going to happen, was it? Sorry, lads. <laughs> I f I fancy Sorry. The, Man of I the fancy people, aren't you? You knew <laughs> that the, the people who signed up would get the fiver, didn't you, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, you should be thanking us, really. A few people have messaged saying they've, uh, they've had a few dabbles with the mates. On uh, on golf course and FIFA. FIFA. I saw one on FIFA. Yeah. Did, did you see that video? We were running around. <laughs> <thinking>. Bollock hole. <laughs> <laughs> bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind a bit of feedback. Not I don't want yeah. naked. No. Just, just out of curiosity, anybody got any money on them at the minute? No. No. no any what? Money. Have I got any money? Yeah. No, I haven't. No. No, mate. No. 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 See what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I've got them three mates, and you will never take any money with them anyway. <laughs> We've got another this weekend. Anybody who signs up, the Kosh bet. All you're going to do, put in the code Kosh, and if you're already signed up with the code Kosh, you'll get a notification. Five We're going for Barnsley to win, Sunderland to win, Bolton to win. All our own teams. Betting All with three a, wins. Betting with, with our hearts. Yes. So if, they, if one of them teams don't win, yep. everybody will get a tenner back. We lose, boys. We again. Lose. again. <laughs> Serial losers, aren't we? <laughs> Serial losers. We are just big losers. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be tough, I think. I think Bolton might be the stubborn. Bolton always let us down, Chris. I know. 
also, if, you, if you've not signed up yet and you use that code COSH, you get a free £5 bet. And if you refer a mate, he gets five as well. So you can have a, a bit of a wager. Bring yourselves. So we, need to, we need to do one soon, like an, an eggy boff. Yes. Whose phone's going to go off at next recording? <laughs> yours, 100%. <laughs> Always yours. Very unprofessional. <laughs> Just fucking done a text message while I sat here. No, I was checking some. It was checking some. <laughs> it was work related. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, link's in the description. Yeah. And it's like we said, uh, no bookie. That's the good mm. thing about it. There's no, no bookie. It's just betting against your mates. It's take no commission. It's uh, it's just a platform for having a bit of fun with your friends. And it doesn't take 20 seconds. So link's in the description. Get yourself involved. Be gamble aware. And you must be over 18. Of course you must. Please do gamble responsibly. Responsibly, that's the thing. Well, that's the thing. It's just a fiver between your mates. You can't but be responsible in that situation. <laughs> well, your arms go up. <laughs> <laughs> What did you actually think of like when you go into full time football? Because it's a fucking strange world. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts? Were you like, I didn't expect it to be like this. There's, I've got somebody shitting in somebody's wash bag. There's lads pissing on each other in the shower. <laughs> were you like, I'm sure it shouldn't be like this. Yeah. Them stories was Bristol City <laughs> because that happened. I was like, is this for real? I remember when uh, Danny Coles. Oh, Coles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Coles, Danny Coles, he was my, um, I was his boot boy. And I was I was going back to London for the weekend. And the bus was going, I was rushing. I didn't clean his boots. So I got back in the next, we got him back in from Monday. And my boots had shit in them from Friday. I was like, and he, he told me years later. He didn't tell me at the time. He told me. He told, he, told, he told me about 10 years later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good, good pals and that. He's a good guy. And uh, he, he was trying to teach me a lesson. But I was like, no, I had to go back to London. I had white tracks on as well. I'm not cleaning your boots in it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, How did you react? Well, I didn't wear them again. <laughs> you know, I was just, was nasty. We had we had loads of them. We got PFA free boots and stuff like that at the time. So I had to wear copers and um, World Cups for <laughs> till the next batch came. You know what I mean? And they were horrible boots at the time. I feel like you're speaking in a derogatory term about copers. I won't have a bad word. You said played about in them. Really. Yeah, yeah. You loved yeah, them. I did it all. They're for referees and coaches. <laughs> <laughs> oh clubbers like us <laughs> I can just imagine Coles is shitting in your boat and yeah. All. yeah he did that yeah there's all sorts going on there yeah I just I was just I was sitting there just think I, I spoke to Clay and Fortune a lot I was like is this real <laughs> like are they really doing it with professional footballers <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's going on, man? Is, is this normal? They say, but the thing just... is, professional footballers, but still just a group of young lads. Yeah, are all the same. Do, uh, well, my mates weren't doing all that. <laughs> 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 my mates weren't doing that. That's, you'll get in trouble for doing that outside. <laughs> How many games had you played uh, under Danny Wilson before the playoff final? Twenty-seven. Right, because I know there was a lot of things with the fans. They mentioned about you not getting in the squad mm. for that game, and did that hurt at the time? The oh you yeah, were playing. Yeah, because it was my second time at the Millennium Stadium in the in a year, because <laughs> we had the LDV Vans Trophy final, so we got to play a final against Brighton. Only striker fit, positive thinking. Just getting on the bench at least. Got in the change room. Um, he's named the team. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not in the team, so I've walked around. If you've been to Millennium Stay, you have, haven't you? Uh, no, I never no. played there. Go, go around to the baths, and I started crying, playing Fortune. I was devastated, devastated. I was thinking, how? How is this possible to me? How's this happened to me twice in a year? This big stadium, you know the things you dream of as a kid, playing in finals, big stadium. Uh, how's this happened to him? crying? Clayton, give me a hug. Fair play. He looked after me like a big brother in, within a football club. And he put his arm around me and said, Don't worry, man, you, you'll, be, you'll be all right. Real. You'll be all right. Come with me. He took me straight into the bar. Didn't drink at this point. You didn't? No. Well, a little bit, not. A bit of WKD blue, apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's about it then. <laughs> took me into the bar. Um, we sat there. To get a little lad. Didn't see the warm up. Didn't see the game. Was it a game? Didn't see the game. We went out um, about a minute before uh, the final whistle. Um, 
we, we sat in a bar and just drank. They were making me drink, what was it, JD and Coke or something like that. It's was a heavy one for a non-drinker. Yeah, yeah. For a non-drinker, yeah, yeah. <laughs> non it's yeah. in big. JD and Coke, I was, I was, it put a smile on my face. Made, <laughs> made me forget about the pain that for a moment and that. And then we went outside and I was just like, I was still devastated. And then getting back on the coach, um, you've seen the Bristol uh, Rovers fans on the, one of the bridges. Hey, it's hell because we lost. Mm. And we lost against Brian. Leo Knight scored the winner. Then after I had my little cry, the next got season pissed. Got, got pissed <laughs> in a in the bar for the first time with all the family there. I came in there, everyone, Leroy, what are you doing here? They're like, oh, wait, I'm not involved. They're like, I'm like why? What? What, what, what was the reason? Never got an explanation. Never even even when I played for Danny again, because obviously it's years later, I forgave him because it gave me more resilience to um, disappointment. You know what I mean? Um, I've, I just felt okay. I have to work harder, you know what I mean? Because I'm getting to these big games and I'm being left out. I'm a young lad, I was thinking I was 18 at the time or something like that. Um, I'm left out, disappointed, but you have to keep going. And um, he got the sack. We went back to Bristol, uh, celebrated, and we all got on our phones. The manager's going or about to be sacked next day or whatever, he's gone. And um, Brian Tinian's got the job. I remember sitting with Tins on the coach as a player. He, play, he was a, a player, player and went brilliant. up to manager. Him, Scott Murray, Lewis Carrier, Mickey Bell. I used to sit with all them, by them, just the stories with them, brilliant. Um, and Tin said to me on the table one time, if I forget the manager's job, you'll be playing every week. And um, so he's got the job. We've gone it. Must have been like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Through. I was like, yeah, I was hoping he keeps, sticks to his yeah. word, to be fair. People talk. Yeah, yeah. And I, he called each player in and I went into the, his office and said, I'm on your plan. He's, he said, Yeah, you're going to be involved. I said, Good. Okay, cool. Can I have the number eight shirt, please? First test. Yeah, yeah first test. Gave me it. So, yeah, he kept his word. I think it's mad that you still speak so well of Danny, Danny Wilson after, because you, you hit. You did really well under Tinian, didn't you? Mm. But the fact that he, he left you out in them finals and didn't really play you, but you still speak yeah, because, really well of him. Yeah, because he taught me a lot he, without even saying anything yeah. to me. It's easy to go, nah, he left me out, yeah. but then you're just a sulker because that, that player that's been left out would be a be a player that's gone, it's gone like that for them. But where... I took it as a positive, like, instead of... The positives that you've taken out of it. Yeah, instead of sulking about it, I just worked hard and, you know, as I said, he gave me them little bits that give you the things you need to, you know, survive in a game. But then Tinian's took over and just put every faith in you, Annie. Yeah. Give you the number eight shirt and... Go and do your best. Yeah. yeah and just said, let you do what you... Just left me free. He knew my game because of my runs and it he was always these passes anyway, so... And, um, yeah, he's just, just a good guy and generally he gave me a just, just go and play because I know you're good enough and... You know, he was sick of the strikers before, and, he is, and, he, and he's, he's a Geordie as well. He's nice as he's a young lad in Newcastle's team, so that might have been coming from him, like where he got a little bit of it and just left me to it. And then, you know, I repaid him, I would say. So, 29, 29 goals in your first full season. Some fucking hit the ground running, ain't you? Yeah. Um, what was I, 19, 20 years old? I was just hungry and determined, man, to do well because. I saw Bristol as a stepping stone. Um, you know, when you've been at a big club like Chelsea and the disappointment, you, you can go the opposite way. You've seen it many a time. Mm -hmm. um, but I just saw Bristol's good place, good environment to be around, good club, good fans. Um, you know, do well here and then you can just take that next step up. And that was my focus bit by bit. And instead of, you know, taking the rejection as a... Oh, giving up or whatever, so I just kept going. Good group as well. Good group. You know what, the, the, I, I can't speak any highly of that group of players because you had so many different characters. Mad men. Who are the, uh, mad, who, who are the, who are the mad men? Lee Peacock, I'll tell you, Lee Peacock, <laughs> Lewis Carey, Mickey Bell, Scott Murray, Clay and Fortune. <laughs> These are all finished as well now. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then you had a mixture of lads who were really professional. And I mean, you're oh, so you're implying that them ones maybe weren't quite as professional as what they should have been. 
they're doing things that professional footballers shouldn't be doing. <laughs> <laughs> he was captain at some point, wasn't he, Carey? I always said him down as like a straight down the yeah. line. What? Yeah. Lewis? Yeah. Yeah, that's how I have perceptions. <laughs> oh, it can be a weird thing sometimes. But um, And where were you in the scale? I was the youngest in the squad. Just finding my way, I really. I speak to everyone. I didn't really stay in there. I, I like, when we travelled, I like to listen, to sit with Scott Murray and Brian Tinian because there's loads of experienced lads and stories in, especially Tinian because Newcastle, he played for Newcastle. Mm. I just kept thinking he's played for Newcastle. I must be able to feed off something of him. Like, it's a big club, isn't it? So, um, Brian Tinian, and it's just, and then uh, I got to have a laugh for the younger players. Liam Rosinha, well, me and him was similar. Um, we got on like a house on fire and you know, just a really good group of different characters and you know that that you would actually go to war with you know yeah. what I mean I know we didn't get promoted but we was there every year there every day every year pushing and um, yeah good group of is, is this the period where Bradley O was saying there was a quite heavy drinking culture in Brad, came, Brad, Brad came when Brian took over I remember when Brad came in because um, he was at Newcastle, yeah? Came in as a centre midfielder. Something happened with him, I think, I don't know what, he just come out of prison or, I don't know, something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. And um, there was all that talk, but I got on well with him, and uh, you know, Scousers are the funny guys, aren't mm -hmm. they? Good, good characters, and then that, that group there, that was a drinking. Yeah. Bomb scare. Had you carried on with the Jack Downs and Corks? Um, Get involved with the... I moved to Malibu and Coke. <laughs> <laughs> no, Malibu and Orange. <laughs> it's even worse. Fifteen pints of lager and uh, a Malibu, Malibu and Orange, and orange please. please. Malibu and Orange. Um, Danny used to always know when you've been out and stuff like that. He knew when the players have been out and stuff like that. I think Brian was your mate, like teammate the year before. So it's, it's, he was he was um, he was player manager. So it was difficult for him. And uh, yeah, that culture was that. that the culture of the club changed then and we was literally, we was always out. Is it a goldfish ball as well, Bristol? Yeah, that's that's another story. <laughs> when I went back there, oh, yeah, we went out. Where did we go? We went on the waterfront, all the Bristol City lads. And I think we had a couple of, Jermaine Pennant and um, Jonathan Fortune come down from London. I think they played for, I think he played for Birmingham and mm. Charlton at the time. I've gone to go and meet some of the lads. I was on my own. I wasn't. John Arley was there. Ran off. I remember that. Chelsea. Yeah. Left, John, what Chelsea left back. Yeah. John Arley was there. And um, these lads have tried to jump. Two lads have tried to jump me. And um, John Arley, I can't remember his mate's name. They've ran off. Left me on my own. So I'm just scrapping these two guys. And um, then the other lads, have, they've, their mates have come over. <laughs> um, Clayton and all that have come on. I remember John... John Dyer from Bristol would have coming off. So it's too late now, it's finished, man. <laughs> yeah, I was have you sorted him out? Yeah, I sorted him out. <laughs> How many? Just only two of them. And um, still? John, John Arley ran off though. And I, I don't think I've seen him since that day. <laughs> he's still running. He's been <laughs> where far did he go? <laughs> he's just chasing around Bristol now. He, he was, <laughs> he's I, remember him, I remember when they started, he's looking at me like, we're going to walk what off or there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've started now, mate. He, he ran off. I remember. <laughs> Went back to Chelsea. Yeah, he ran off. I can't remember. I remember that. Well, he ran off. The look in his face. Yeah. And his bit. Yeah. Oh, shit, man. Yeah. Why were you with him? Was he with Fortune and Pennant? All or? mates, yeah. Some players at the same age. I know John from Chelsea anyway. Um, yeah, he ran off. I remember that. Mm. <laughs> I wonder if he watches this. Yeah, I hope he does. You ran off, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but the way it is, because it is like quite toxic, isn't it, Bristol? Yeah. Between the Rovers and it City was fans. the Rovers fans that, that done it. Like I remember getting glassed there. So what Jeez. in Bristol? Mm. Yeah, was the score? Which side? This side, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, just lucky with my eyes. So, yeah. We shouldn't have been out. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you want to run out and you got glassed by a Bristol Rovers fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. See, I like a night out as much as anyone, but I think I'm You're just going up going, going somewhere, going somewhere else. else. Yeah, that's what that's what the club said. They said uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we were we were young lads and not we weren't on too much money then. So I think local down the road, cheap taxi down the road. And um that's what we tried to do. John Arley. 
Uh, he did look a fanny though, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. 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 Funny. I bet he didn't wank anyway in fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get out of your way. You just, yeah, they're just getting in your way. You're just causing trouble yeah. here, yeah, John. Like, just get out of your way. Let me start swinging. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> stand back. <laughs> just ran off. Man. What happened with Steve Brooker? I know a few people have uh, mentioned that. Chatting the races, you know, you know, was it March or whatever during the season? So we all went down there. Um, had a good day out, good banner and everything like that. We've got back to Bristol. And I remember the bar we used to go, Browns, I think it was called or something like that. We was all in there, just empty. It was just us in there on I think Tuesday night or something like that. And we're having a drink, blah, blah. Sat next to Brooks, we're talking. He started singing a song. And it, it included the N-word. I said, all right, mate, don't say that. Yeah, but I weren't calling you. I said, don't say that in front of me. I said it to him 10 times. I said, if you say it one more time, I'm, I'm going to smash your face in. Like He went, no, but I'm not calling you. And said the word. And I lost my head. And then Clayton Falls just come over and grabbed me. He's helped me for about five minutes. I said, listen, you can hold me as long as... Clayton's a big lad. He gets his arms around you. You're not moving. I'm, I'm, not, in, I'm not in beef with him. He's, he's trying to look out for me. I said, Clayton, listen, hold me as long as you want. As soon as you let me go, I'm going for him. End of. So he's taking... Took me outside, said, calm down, calm down. Brooks has come outside. And then I said, Clayton, you need to let me go, mate, because he's still chatting rubbish. Oh, so he's carried on as he's come out? No, nah, but he kept going, yeah, but I weren't calling you. I weren't calling I said, don't say the word. Don't say the word. Clayton, and he said it, and Clayton went, right, I'm letting him go. I just went, I just went, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And he's dropped on the floor, left him. And that was, carried on with our night. So... I give, I give him a couple of kicks to the face. And so he <laughs> didn't, didn't even get to throw a punch. So. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Did you, was there any repercussions to the fight? Did it get out to the manager? Yeah, it got out to the press, got out to the manager. The manager was on the phone like within about two hours. Uh, come and see me in the morning, blah, blah, blah. What's happened, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting told this and blah, blah, blah. Got into the office, I told you before, got, got in the office and sat with. Keith Millen, um, Brian Tinian, I think the secretary, Michelle, the secretary. And um, they're going, what's happened? I've told him. I said, I warned him enough times to not say that word in front of me. And even then he's still trying, I weren't trying to say, I wasn't calling you. I went, don't, I told you enough times, don't say the word. I don't care if you're singing a song in front of me, you don't say the word, you know what I mean? End of the day. And I walked out. That was it. Didn't shake hand. They asked us to shake hand. I said, I'm not shaking his hand. Walked out, never spoke to him again. Uh, we played, carried on playing the games and that. Talked to him in the game. That's it. Never, never off the pitch. Never spoke to him. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard about 20 versions of that one. <laughs> but I'm like, what? When the story gets round, yeah. round, it just changes. Like, so, wow. whispers. So, yeah. So that was the Brooker one. Yeah. We didn't speak after that. And then I left that summer anyway. Finished the season and then got bought after that by Reading. Did you have any other options? Burnley came in. Where would where were Burnley then? Championship. Well, the same league, yeah. I've never heard of Burnley. <laughs> <laughs> Burnley, where the fuck's that? At the time, I never heard of Burnley. I was like, where's that? Was your contract due to finish? I had one year left. So it would have been a tribunal. Right. Because I was still under 20. So they knew whoever was coming in in that period. They, they were good, yeah, to buy, yeah, yeah. Fair to Brian Tinney, he wasn't trying to push me. They called me into a meeting to this fancy hotel. One of, I don't know, I think the chairman owned it or something like that. They're sitting there, they're writing numbers to me. I'm like, that's decent, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Compared to what I was on. He's writing more numbers. I'm, just, I'm dead cool, sat there. Yeah, man, you just have to speak to my agent. So I've walked out, I've gone, could have got this, could have got that. <laughs> <laughs> just sign the ting. Just, just sign the ting, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you thinking, no, I want to no, no. play higher. No, um, because I had my agent very good. Yeah, he was advising me every day because I had no experience of that stuff yeah, like yeah. Uh, someone writing numbers in front of you, this is what we're going to give you. You can have it. So, yeah, fair play looking back now. The young lad now, but most of the people are like, yeah, where? But um, yeah, I stayed cool, and um, you know, my agent said, "Don't sign nothing." They knew, what, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, yeah. you must have been twitching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And just, that's a, is that illegal? No, I was old enough. I was old. I was uh, 18, 19. Yeah, so that's legal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They were doing Not that. very ethically correct. No, nah, no. Probably but, yeah. a bit. So. A bit naughty. I think they're a bit shocked because the way I didn't like jump off my seat or nothing like that. Like, but in my head, I was thinking all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> what car am I going to buy? Yeah. I'll get like, my first house. In my house, in my, my head, I was like, oh, child, you know, you could do that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I walked down and I called my head. I said, you know what? He's just writing down on a piece of paper. He said, like, relax, you'll get more than that when you move. Yeah. He's right. <laughs> got more than, a lot more than that. A million quid for you yeah. to be ringing, ringing them up for a, for a trial. For three, three years game. previous. Four years, four three, years, four years previous, yeah. yeah. And then, so they've still done, they've still done. I told them that the situation. When I got that, I told them that. Yeah. I said, you know, I rang you up for a trial four years ago, innit? They were like, what? Who's recruitment? Who's in the recruitment? <laughs> Someone's taking credit for it, aren't they? <laughs> I, I remember I picked him up. I picked him up. I could always saw his potential. Yeah, somebody got the P45. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone got sacked real quick. <laughs> yeah. What were he like, Steve Koppel? Ah, we're the best, man. The best. Like In what way? Just... We've not really heard much about him, have nah. we? Nah. You don't see much of him outside the football game, but he knows you more than... You think he knows. He comes from that Ferguson generation where they'll have their eyes and ears everywhere and um, he'd do his investigation on you and stuff like that. It, it, I'm certain he had people follow me. I think we've heard that before. Certain he had people follow me around because some of the stuff he knew, I was like, how? <laughs> it wasn't like now where you go somewhere and someone's got their phone out, their video. I was like, how? How do you know that? And he used to say, Leroy, in his voice, Leroy, I know where you was last night, where you was with, and who's, I heard she's a bit of a treat, and all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, was, yeah. Yeah. I didn't rate it that much. <laughs> <laughs> After the date, anyway. Would <laughs> um, well, he keep it to himself a lot of the time until yeah, yeah. summer? No, he won't use it against you either. He won't use it against Just you. Just let you know that he knew. Yeah, because, like, in the meetings, I used to, you know, like when doing analysis and that, I still always fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> like, it get you in. The first thing, you know, like, I live around the corner from the training ground. I'm like, here we go, video's on there again. And it was video back then as well. So it's rewinding, it weren't clips and that. It's playing. So if it's a 15 minute video, you have to watch the whole thing. And then if, if it wants to show something again, they have to press rewind and go back. Someone busy <laughs> twat in the group. Gaffer, can you go back to when that defender was at? Yeah, when was that? Eight minutes ago. <laughs> 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 um, you'll, sit, you'll sit in there. Um, then I used to just, just drop off every time. All, the, all I had was, someone wake Leroy up, please. <laughs> the gaffer, just someone nudge me like that. Oh, it was funny. He, he, he didn't use that against you. Yeah. He knew your character. I was a 20-year-old lad, like, things are changing for me. I wasn't, I was still working hard and I still putting it on the pitch, mm. but you shouldn't really do it. But you're a young lad, you've got to live a little bit as well. We all need sleep, don't we? I wasn't. <laughs> we all need our sleep. Yeah. And that sleep. Is, is and I, boring. And why would I want, I'm not, I wasn't wanting to finish training and go and sit on the PlayStation all day. What is that? What kind of life is that? I, so I used to, Check, check them, you know, I used to look out for them. My mates that weren't working. So, you know what I mean? The ones that weren't working, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Just finish training, go and do something, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was always red hot in them rooms as well, wasn't it? The, the meeting the analysis yeah. room. Yeah. Lovely yeah. sleeping well, temperature. Sleep, we, yeah. we, we, we had um, cabins as well. So there was no, was there, there was no air con in there. There was in them cabins. I think they were building Redding's training ground at the time. I, I think they've only just got rid of them. And, um, yeah, it was hot in there, man. And the, the <laughs> sofa was so comfortable as well. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You so often, so our expected chairs. No, we had, we, had so, we had long sofas. Oh, it was so cushions comfortable. Yeah, no yeah, cushions, no cushions. No cushions. You're not like, going to fall asleep on us, are you? No, nah, 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 <laughs> nah, I'm good, I'm good. No was worry. it, uh, you know, you talked about that contract at Bristol. Did, did, did you know your negotiation with Bruce? Was it Majes? Majeski then? John, do you even know? <laughs> I walked into Majeski Stadium when he paid a million pounds. No, I had a, the budget. He was out of his own pocket. So I walked in the Majesty's Stadium to, about to do my medical and stuff like that. I've gone into the restaurant with my agent. He'd walked past him and um, didn't have a clue who I was. He's paying a million quid for yeah, him. Didn't, know, didn't, even want, didn't even know what I looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Swear it on. I could have been anyone who's just like, oh, good morning, guys. He's with um, Cilla Black. 
at the time. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like a surprise, surprise. <laughs> Dude, the he didn't know. <laughs> yeah, he was, he, was, he was having dinner with um or lunch, whatever, with Silla Black. So <laughs> Silla come down to the training ground. I'll show you around. Said, no, he did. Oh, <laughs> was it, my agent had to go. Um, um, so John Majeski, this is Leroy, by the way. Oh, oh, oh how was that? He didn't even know who I was. <laughs> and he just paid a million pound out of his own pocket for me. I was like, what's that? What's going on? Like, that's, that's fine. <laughs> what, what, what did Silla have? Like dry pasta and I'll just dry try, chicken? I, 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 did, I, did, I was like, Silla Black, he's, he's, he's doing bits with Silla Black, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's ledge, man. She's a you know, Saturday Night TV woman, now, isn't it? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, ledge. Bless her soul. Was there Wally Downs there? Yeah, Wally. Was yeah. he? Because I imagine couples like, like you say, softly spoken, the good cop. I've never heard him shout. Wally Downs, was he the voice? He meant Kevin Dillon. So Gaffer wasn't the good cop, but he was just like, this is what we're doing, boys. This is how we're playing. Boom. Well, yeah, Wally. In with the banner, uh, um, we want to get involved with the lads, blah, blah, blah. Take training sometimes. And uh, he took care of the defenders mainly. Then you had Kevin Dillon. Um, I didn't get on with him. I uh, walked off training a couple of times because of him. What, just not giving you free fouls. kicks? And, yeah. No, no, bad ones as well. <laughs> no, no, no. Them ones, you know, he's doing it on purpose. <laughs> no, no, I said, I had enough of it. I said, I'm, I just walked in. <laughs> One time I walked in, didn't come back for two days. I walked. <laughs> one time, that's how bad it got. Where'd you go? go? I went home and locked my locked my door. They were all knocking my door, I'm calling my agent. I live like two miles away from the training ground, and they were all knocking my door. And I was like, "Nah, like, he's taking a mick out of me." And he was laughing about it as well. It's like I'm like that guy could have broke my leg there, and he's laughing about it, not giving nothing. No, play on. And it was a personal thing between me and him because when I spoke to him, we did not get on. So it wasn't even. A trying to thing. tough your own. Yeah, it wasn't trying own. to help me in yeah. any way. It was a personal thing. and um, That is a protest, that, by the way. Uh, Two days. Going here, Walt. The, the, the walking off's quite bad, yeah. but nah, fuck the, it. The I'm second time, the second time, I didn't come back for two days. My agent had to call me. Um, I was in my, Brian Tinian's, um, not Brian Tinian, Brian McDermott was the one. He was um, chief scout at Reading. He's the one who calmed me down and said, just get yourself back in training, mate. We'll sort it out. We'll make sure that don't happen. Again, like that, yeah. So did you get fined in that for that? No. Nothing. Did you start getting free kicks in training? He didn't ref again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's out. Yeah. <laughs> Wally done it after that, I think. So. I think you've won that battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was disgusting, though. Like, he's, he, you can see he was doing it on purpose. And, like, it wasn't a laughing matter for me because I'm competitive, you know what I mean? And he's taking a, taking a mickey, like... You can't have that. It did know. used to be annoying though, didn't it? Oh, if it was word. blatant. No, but he, no, it was only me, only me. He only did it to me. Everyone else who gave given free kicks and, he, and this, it wasn't one of them, like sometimes you, they do it to, you. like you said, they do it to toughen, toughen you up. Toughen you up, yeah. I, I, can, I can handle a tackle. I don't mind being smashed. You know, someone get the ball smashing, it's cool. I'll get up. But it was embarrassing. Pulling your shirt, obviously, I oh, play on and stuff like that. It's just got too much. You know? And I was like, we need to sort this out. <laughs> I'm off. Fuck it. No, off. I just literally walked in, walked in, didn't even shower, put my clothes on, got in the car, drove on. I wish I'd seen that. I'd have been yeah. pissing myself. What did you do for two days in your flat, like doors like we had a PlayStation? I had a PlayStation. I didn't play it, no. <laughs> I, I was actually that pissed probably for about a whole day because my phone was going off all the time. Like the, the, dev, the first day I didn't turn up, phone's going up. Second day, Phone's still going, I'm still mad and blah. I just went and got some food and just chilled in my house. Like, and then I heard them all knocking on the door, pressing the bell, blah, blah, blah. Because <laughs> I left the gates open, everything like that, pressing the bell, no, no, not answering. Right window. <laughs> went, upstairs, went upstairs and look, opened the top one and looked down. Nope, not answering to you. <laughs> <laughs> He's in there, I've seen him in a window. <laughs> so, they knew I was there, my cars were there. Yeah. Yeah, so. Some curtains twitching there. <laughs> He's there, he's there, he's looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite uh, Graham Stack story? Oh, there's only one, isn't it? When he lost the bet to his mates. I think they were playing cards or maybe some drinking game and the forfeit was you have to get a hot iron printing on your back. So if you look at Stacky's back, it's got an iron print. Are we going full cotton? Full whack? No, full... No, that's, not, that's, that's not healing. 
that's branding. It's like, cattle it, branding. Oh, it was horrible. Like, it got iron, and I was like, yeah, this, this. Were, you there, were you there for the... No, I didn't see it, but he came in training. He weren't, couldn't train. So I said, well, you're training. You know, you, just, you ain't even played for about six months, so you're injured. And like, <laughs> they went like that. I was like, ooh, it's all red and pussy and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I, I stayed away from him after that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I can't imagine what you say to the physio. Like, to the physio. Like, I can't well, you can't, you why, can't, why? That, that's it. What are you going to say it is? That's, that's all right, well, I'll, you can't say you're lent against quids in shape of an iron, yeah, isn't Yeah, that's a bit too serious. That that game is too far. So, yeah. I can imagine it smelt and all when it burned. Singe. Yeah. Mm. He couldn't train until it healed. And so the, I didn't really get close because he, he was with City and all them, where me and City didn't really see eye to eye. You've just said that group there, so it, that sounds to me as though there may be clicks in that group. I don't think there was clicks. I don't think... Well, Sidi and Stacky know each other from Arsenal. Hmm. And James Harper, they all grew up through Arsenal Academy, didn't they? James Harper, he's what a fella he is, man. <sighs> he's mad, isn't he? He's, he's, he's real, isn't he? He's real, he don't mess around. Yeah, I, James <laughs> Harper, I liked him because he's always said what he thought. I remember. <laughs> I, think, I think it's because he's got Tourette's. Yeah, yeah. Is he? No, but no. you think, you think, <laughs> think he has. Yeah. When we um when I signed, I came in the gym and him and Kitson were in there, and um, Nick Hammond, the director of football at the time. Um, we didn't have much equipment in there in the gym. They bought this new building, and I think Kits went. Well, when are we gonna get some more kits um, equipment for the gym and uh, and um, Nick was giving it. Oh, we haven't got the budget or something. Blah blah. blah. James Arthur. Yes, we fucking have. You just fucking spent a million pound on him. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. Like, yeah, it's, it's real. We together, we fight for each other. Like, But yeah, we wouldn't necessarily go out for dinner or something. Well, I prefer it like that. Anyway, as long as you go to war with, on the pitch and yeah. yeah, it's better to be like that. When you compare it to the Bristol dressing room, it sounds different. Professional wise, no, not even close. It totally changed. I think everyone there was like hungry to get to the Premier League everyone was I've never been in a group where and I haven't seen a group of young players 20 24 I think we had a few older ones that just were so much hunger to get to the top at one time so the recruitment from the Reading at the time that is unreal and Coppel's done that for fun to be yeah. fair any he's always put in brought in the players that have that. Mm. Uh, Virtually unknowns, weren't yeah, they? Like know, Hunt, brothers, yeah. Doyle. Hun Hunty, you'd have him in your team all day. And where did Hunty. that come from, That to distill that hunger? Did that come from Coppel? Or no, I think that comes from us. That has come from yourself. You know what I mean? That, that's in you, isn't it? If you, but you've got to nurture it. Yeah, he did. He, so he, uh, he nurtured it where, he did, well, he said, <laughs> this way he did, he said, we win, team stays the same. Don't care if you're 18 or 35. And the, the, the team only change if there's um, injuries and suspensions. Stuck to his word. What can, what, what can you complain so about? So even if you've had like three shitters? The team's one. You're still in the team? Same team. Same team. So it worked for you, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, there's no one knocking on his door. So you know you somebody knocking on your door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 like um, you get injured, you miss a game. Obviously, to change it, that team plays, and you're back. You have to wait your time. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just that's how it was. Well, yeah, it makes, it, it, makes it easier for players. Yeah. What can you true. What can you complain about? What can you actually say to him? Like, I think I'm better than him. Okay, cool. You might be, but the team's winning. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. that's what he'll say to you. You know what I mean? It's like, it don't matter what you cost. Remember the second season or third season, second season, we bought Greg Halford for club record, um, whatever it was. He came over like, well, I'm club record. I should be playing then. Stay there. <laughs> Stay there. Couple left him. Was he that Murty? Was Murty playing right back at that yeah, time? Still? Yeah, Murty. He was trying to bring it. He was doing well where he was. You know what I mean? He's coming to a club where things are going all right and do everyone's doing well. You have to you get involved with that culture, you know what I mean, of that club at the time. But he came in with like, I'm not playing, moaning, not training well, blah, blah, blah. Stay there. But the next window is gone. 
Pepe, yeah, what am I saying about? What am I saying about? I think that's when he came window. to Sunderland. Yeah, one Did he win- go to Sunderland the, then? He went to Sunderland. The next window, he was gone. And I think they paid more for him, so I don't make a bit of money. <laughs> so, <laughs> Excellent business, yeah. Steve. <laughs> so, and um, he didn't buy into how everything was. He thought he should be playing every week. And he didn't. And that was it for him. Who was your favourite strike partner, Redden? Because he had a strong four, were not they? I didn't mind. I didn't mind. Even, even Longy. Longy was good to play with. Kits was great to play with. Doily was the same. I couldn't pick. Well, Longy would like you save your running. He would yeah, because you got just, just put different, a shift in, yeah. Didn't different it? different players uh, you benefit benefit from from different things. Where Longy was, he just he just ran. Just ran. So like, oh, okay, you can go. I just wait for the ball. <laughs> yeah, he just it ran. A, ran. It was a strong four mind, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Did you uh, did you feel comfortable when you got to the Premier League? Then first few games in, you'd arrived at your your final destination. Um, just I was really excited. I broke my leg when we got promoted, and um, I broke my leg in March. Played Burnley away. Just had a shot. My tibia just cracked. Uh, so um, I didn't play for the rest of the season. Um, first game of the season was against Middlesbrough and uh, I was on the bench. It was 2-0 was down the game. I came on, got back to 2-2 two, two, and I scored the winner. Um, yeah, I was just buzzing and, you know, dream, dream come true, playing in the Premier League, scoring on your debut. You know, all those thoughts you had and dreams and thinking it over in, over in your head and then it's finally happened. Yeah, it was a great feeling. And um, What was your feel? celebration? If you scored, if you went ballistic in a pre-season game, <laughs> yeah. what were you like? First Premier League goal? I was out of control. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing anything, just running, just running. I remember the city was trying to catch me. So no one caught me to stop. So I just <laughs> ran. I don't know where to go. I was like, run around there. Our fans, that's their fans and our fans on the other side. So I went round the goal. <laughs> Ran the other side celebrating. <laughs> um, my family were up where I celebrated, so I seen them and just like going crazy and you know just enjoying that moment because you know all them years of working hard and sacrifice and stuff. So well, you're just, only probably what nine years from writing your letters, aren't you? Four years. Four years from writing your letters and you're scoring the Premier League. Mm, yeah, so it's quick, man. It's quick. Um, Malibu and orange. Malibu and orange. Oh, no. <laughs> when I started having a drink, I started relaxing more. You know, instead of being a shy little robot, I need to show my personality. I like pressure. I like um, people giving you stick. I like that because it makes you gives you more determination and things like that. So, yeah. And when I when I made my debut and scored, and you know, it was a dream crate come true. And um, yeah, it was, it was a great day for me. It's probably went well, and I know it's not nice to see people get injured. But what you were saying about Couple being loyal to the lads that are starting, yeah, you'd been injured. It might have been half a season gone. Mm, yeah, because, that was his front two. Yeah, because I came back, back in. Yeah, I came back. It's, I started the first preseason because uh, Kitson was injured. Um, I came on and scored four on my first game back from a broken leg. And we played Didcot. I came on, I think, for about thirty minutes and scored four goals, and I was scoring all preseason and that. Sweet. I've got an FA Cup hat trick against Digcott, I think. Yeah. I, did I reckon I could get a couple it's against Digcott. A trivial, <laughs> a trivial thing. I think I might have got an FA Cup hat trick against Away, them. away, there, down there. No, we drew two all away. Ooh. I think we won. You got an hat trick? Eh? No, it was the return leg, you oh. prick. <laughs> uh, All's in this story. <laughs> I want to check that later. After, <laughs> I've, I've definitely scored a, a brace against Digcock. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be an accurate. Yeah. Certainly weren't fucking for. <laughs> unravel quickly out there. I scored an hat-trick against Digcock. <laughs> <laughs> two, two draw it was. <laughs> <laughs> won't disallow bar. With a bar one last one. It counts now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so obviously when you get promoted, you, you're usually in the... F- Favourites to go down, even if you have got 103 mm. points, 606 Six. points, sorry. So when did you think in that season, fuck me, we'll be great, we'll, we'll, we'll be all right here? I think outside, everyone else, because you're just small, small red in, promoted, um, goes straight back down. But within, I'm like, we was all confident, I, I knew we'll be all right because we had loads of young, hungry players who want to prove themselves at that level because that's all been our dreams and our first season there's a lot of the players first ever season in the Premier it's always exciting 
didn't really listen to the outside noise. We just focused on us, worked hard every day and, you know, we got the results. Who did he sign when you got, got up? Because I remember him, he stayed loyal to the lads that got him there, didn't he? Mm -hmm. But I can't remember any, there wasn't an yeah, overhaul of signings, was there? Did you finish eighth? Yeah, there wasn't a big change. There wasn't a big change at all. I it's think perfect yeah. for Majeski then, Majeski, whatever he's called. The budget, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah to accelerate on another day. Yeah. yeah. If, it's, if, it's, if, it's, if you've gone up, you finished eighth and not really spent loads, mm. fucking bingo for I'd be minute. surprised if we spent, I'd be very shocked if we spent 10 million. If we were that year we went up, I don't think it was even close to that, really. But I think couple of, from he's got the experience to know that players like that will get you results, you know what I mean? Because you take the, at a time, you take the top four out, everyone's similar, you know what I mean? Anyone can beat anyone. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think he he knew what to do and what he needed and got it right. Who did you headbutt for the three gamer? <laughs> Nobody. Against Charlton. Uh, no, I didn't even get sent off. The, I went to FA hearing. No, um, it was Moroccan, I think, centre uh, back. I pulled his arm or something, didn't headbutt. If I'd headbutted me, he wouldn't be, he'd be on the floor. El El <laughs> was it El Kikuri? Was it him? Yeah, me, yeah, centre back. Yeah, I remember Moroccan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Came to Sunland. So after the game, not, uh, when I got back in, they said, uh, You got an FA here? I'm like, For what? I said, uh, Apparently, you, you've. Um, violent conduct against so and so, and I went to here and I watched it. I'm like, I pulled him, pulled his arm away off me, like pulled him away, and um, they've gone to free game ban because the second time it's the second time I've gone to FA hearing. The waste of time up there. We've, you've done, without, you without even getting sent off, so the referee's not sent me off. So and when I was at Bristol, I went. It was at Bristol. They, I got a free game ban. Said some said something to the ref, and uh, I remember you had Graham Taylor in there. They always put one football guy in there. The rest of the guys are like, <laughs> it looks like he's just come out of a home. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, he needs some care. That guy. <laughs> 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 just, they're just sitting there like zombies, and then Graham Taylor. To be fair to me, just shrugged. He just went, they're in charge, and that's it. Do you stand up and just give you defence? Fuck no. No, you didn't. Really. Listen, you, you, you don't say you nothing. You don't. Yeah. 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 Did, did don't play go. the footage. Don't go. And don't, don't go. go. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I'm going to get the call. Just but. take your ban and don't go. <laughs> Save us in a day's fucking travelling. <laughs> don't go. It's a waste of time. Now, they don't even do it. They don't even do it. Now do it. They don't even do it. I don't even. They don't even call you in anymore. So, no, no, you don't. You don't go to them. What happened when you tripped Jens Lehmann? Oh, during the week, Steve Coppel's said like Le uh, layman he's a bit of a hothead so do anything to try and wind him up pinch him do all nonsense blah blah especially on set pieces so if you watch if you've seen the footage you shout and go mad at someone so i just thought i'd top him up like so <laughs> did you give him one the the eel clip no 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 he's, no, this... no he's walking backwards right i'm just watching him just pretend to do my laces and he fell over bro. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah so <laughs> Yeah, that was just couples just say, yeah, try and fire him up and just wind him up as much as you can. And to be fair, he was a hot head, and uh, but he's demanding. It was. What was his response? Does he? In your to face? be fair, he went. He laughed about it, so it didn't work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Would well, he be into the old dark arts couple? Oh yeah. Do everything he can to. Yeah, not nasty, but not nasty. If you're in the team and you're like, they just take you off. Because I remember pre-season game against MK Dons. Um, Someone was, a couple of lad, their lads were winding me up and he, he, before anything happened, just took me off. And, and yeah. What would wind you up? One of the lads would grab, try to grab my bollocks and, that, and I was like, don't do, you just don't do that. And that's old, that's 70s, 80s football, man. Uh, I've, been known, I've uh, been known to grab a set of two, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, uh, don't yeah. grab, don't, don't, as a man, you don't do that, man. <laughs> you don't do that. That's just... <laughs> No go with that. Yes. The armpit hairs were the one. You know, if you get the armpit hairs, you always get it. Fuck. Yeah. You, know, you can't. It's just a natural reaction. Somebody pulls your arm, your armpit hairs, yeah. and then you lift the elbow, and then you fucking go down as though you've been shot. Yeah. No. Never more have I needed VPN. Well, looking for you, they are sponsoring this episode of the show, John. So I go away on Saturday morning. Yeah. Early. Where are you going? Nurka. Ryder Cup weekend. If I'm wanting to watch Sky go, it's not going to work, is it? Not going to work. Oh, 
We, it will work. We can make it work. It fucking will work with my VPN. Get your Nord VPN on. They're going to think I'm back in Barnsley. What are you going to do? Bounce my location. Bounce your location. That's that's yes, deal. you are. I'll be, oh. bounce, I'll be bouncing down to the pool. You'll be like, oh, be boing, boing, on. Boing. For those who don't know about Nord VPN, it's perfect for this exact scenario. You can be in another country. You want to watch the want to watch the Ryder Cup or any other TV program or sports. Anything, like, anything, anything. Only been shown back in the UK. You've got your Sky Go bounce your location back to England, and there you go. You're watching it on your phone, your laptop, your tablet. That's all well and good, Chris. But have we got an offer? Of course, we've got an offer. Sign up, you get three months free when you click on the link in the description. And if you're not impressed, which I guarantee you will be, after thirty days, you can get your money back. So it's a money back guarantee. Money back guarantee is what they call it in the trade. And it works the other way as well. Maybe you're in the UK, want to watch something that's on, on abroad. And we can't forget that security as well for your bank details, your passwords and everything else. Under lock and key with no VPN, nobody's hacking. No hackers are getting in. Can't wait to watch Seve tee off on the first. <laughs> Come on, big dog. All so, yeah, right. Just click on that, click on that link in the description. Off you go. We can't, we can't not talk about Kits, Dave Kitson. Um, great lad, but one of the strangest guys I think I've ever been in a dressing room with Kits. If you, if, you, if you spend time with him, he's actually a really, really nice guy, man. Mm. Uh, he's a lot of knowledge and loves his football. Um, he likes to wind, he likes to wind people up and he, he always, he's always talking in the game, like always giving people a bit and... Um, Always on the ref and stuff like that, but yeah, off the pitch, he's all right, man. He's, he's, he's just remembering when he's write a big piece, write a big paper, you know, the big one, the big one, like spreadsheets, other yeah. Spread, spreadsheets, yeah, is that yeah. what we call them, spreadsheets. And we'd be <laughs> sat with his fucking wife fronts on, with his legs crossed <laughs> in the corner with the telegraph. <laughs> You know what I mean? Reading a spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, what is it? News. You know a, bro I mean? a broadsheet. Broadsheet. <laughs> broadsheet. He's just, he's just doing his accounts in corner. <laughs> we're, all, we're all like in other corners with fucking daily sport and that. Look at <laughs> Tits and that. And he's just sat there with his legs crossed. Nah, he's, a, he's all right. I, I can't say a bad word about him. I've had a few conversations with him, like, since we all stopped playing and that. He's all right, man. He's all right. He's, I, I can't. I can't say anything bad about it. I like. I like the guy. Was the talk of a move at the end of that first season? For me, <sighs> yeah, yeah. There's a few. I went to the Euros that year with the 21s, and um, I, I was the only English player in the team of team of the tournament. Um, so I had a few clubs come in and ready and just turn anything down. They wanted 10 million or something like that, and um, I think the closest. Anyone got to it was Villa, who bid it, I don't know what it was, eight, eight million or something like that. They said no. I was vexed. I'm going back home, locking. No, what was it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, having, I'm having a fucking week off, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, not, not figures wise, but you know, like Aston Villa must have been able to offer you a hell of a lot more than what Reading were going to do. Yeah, but they've Reading offered me a new contract and that. And I was. Come in, I'd, well, I still had two years left on my contract. Villa's a big club, you know what I mean? And um, you do well there, you, you know what I mean? You can go to an, another level, but it didn't happen for me. Um, You're not kick off? You're not pissed? Oh, I did. I, went, I spoke to them. I went in the office straight away. And then they pulled Majeski's wig off? No, no, no. I, spoke to the I, spoke to the, I spoke to the gaffer. He just said, listen, the club are not selling you. That's, that's that. And just you need to get your head down and get on with it. I just sulked. Soaked and soaked. Yeah, uh, understandably. I don't yeah. know exactly. What but did that go against you when it came to the next? Yeah, when it came to the games and selection yeah. and stuff like that. Um, as I told you, Gaff, uh, the gaffer wouldn't have that around him. As soon as you not buying into what he's got planned for the team, I was. It's not. I wasn't buying in. I wasn't interested. I was. My interest was elsewhere. I wanted to move on tonight and. Left me out completely. But that's counterproductive for him because you think if he's that's how he is, I it depends how he. No, well, how he sees I it, it's going to affect the rest of the team. Yeah, yeah was, but so well. tell him get your eight million. Yeah, mm. I mean, yeah, but I was setting a think, precedent for the rest of the lads. If if somebody, but then you think he sells me, they're thinking if they sell me and get that, they're going to have to spend more to get somebody to get else someone else. Yeah, and then 
you can look at it from their point of view. And I understand both. Both. Well, the arguments. chairman was looking. The, the chairman was looking at it as well. It's not a big deal for him, you know. what I mean, bought if it was a million, you know, yeah. So he bought me for a million. Yeah, I get that. But I'd, like, have, I'd have been throwing some fucking yeah. tomato pasta onto the black's hair next time she went training ground. Yeah. <laughs> looking back, she used, I would to she, used to, she used to come in and change rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Did she? What were you doing? I remember we're playing Arsenal away. I was just bollock naked standing there, and Silly Black's just in the change room. Oh, again? Yeah, but yeah, that yeah. was surprising, wasn't it? Come in. <laughs> <laughs> she used to just Is come in. Is that what you're right with this guy? <laughs> shut that shut that fucking slide in door <laughs> she just come in and say wish like, wishing lads good luck with the chairman and that because he used to come in before every game and like, you bring all these celebrity friends and yeah so how long did you sulk for uh, about a year <laughs> 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 thing is you've lost on both sides there, haven't you? you haven't get, you haven't gotten your move and yeah. it's cost you at yeah. Redden really and then the last year of my contract they're trying to accept anything and everyone transfer deadline day it was and um this is like in one o'clock in the afternoon um Redden have accepted a bit from uh, uh, Sheffield United and they've rang me up and said we want you down here, we're going to play you, blah, blah. I wasn't playing at the time, we're going to play you, we're going to make you feel, blah, blah, blah. I said, me and my agent already made up our mind and I already told him that when my contract's done, I'm be 24, go anywhere for free. So my mum was made up about that and just said, I'll get back down, told my agent, give them a call, out of courtesy, you know, just to say it's not happening. And um, yeah, never, never, never happened. I think Bolton as well came in last minute and stuff like that. They were still in the prem at the time, so yeah. And then I just saw my contract out after that. But were so. you just fixed mindset of I'm just well, I'm not going anywhere and waiting till that contract finishes well, and then looking back I listen Michael. looking back, I look at my I listen to my agent a lot and probably weren't the right decision. It worked out in the end, but at the time it weren't probably weren't the right decision. So See, everybody's lost out there really aren't yeah, they? Yeah. yeah so I've lost out in games, you know what I mean? And they've lost out in financial, but um, yeah, it's just one of them things. If football happens, isn't it, all the time, so. I read a thing when, when you came back from loan, you said uh, that you'd change for the better. I just talking for <laughs> I was just talking for <laughs> Telling them what they need to yeah, it wasn't. A, I wasn't bad. Yeah. It's, in, anyone in that position, you like you fully understand. Oh, you, I do. What, yeah. what, fully would understand why you would not be happy. I had a new lease of life at the Middlesbrough, though, didn't you? Yeah, well, that was another one. Southgate was been trying to sign me for two years. So I, that he was one of the teams that when I didn't, had no clue about Middlesbrough, like till I got there. I went up there, met up with him because I was allowed to talk to anyone. Sat down with him for about an hour, spoken that, spoke, you know, telling me about the team and what his plans are and stuff like that. Spoke really well. No surprise on why the England team have been so well, doing so well because he's a manager that you would actually give your all for. You know what I mean? He's honest with you. He, I think he played for Copper as well. So, oh, yeah, yeah, so he's got... He's got, you know what I mean? A couple, a lot of people you speak to when they speak, they take a lot from him because mm -hmm. uh, he's he's a good bloke, you know what I mean? And you don't come across a many in football. So, yeah, but Southgate, you know, sold the club to me and then I went up to Celtic. I had a chat with Gordon Strachan. Liked it, obviously, big club and um, wasn't too sure about going to Scotland. So I ended up signing for Middlesbrough. And um, in the champ, we're in the championship because we're one of the favourites to go out. Doing well with the team, we had good lads, young group as well. Everyone similar age. We, we're having a great time. You know what I mean? We're having a good, too much of a good time. To be fair, <laughs> no reservations about moving that far north. Oh, I didn't realise it was that far. <laughs> <laughs> Just up from Burnley. When I got the train, when I got the train, it's only an hour and a half or something like that. Two hours, but you can be as honest as you want, here, but you know, if you're 24 on a Bosman. Mm. Are you picking the team that's paying you the most? Offering no, you the best wages? I didn't. Celtic no. offered you more? No. Yeah, and uh, I think Leicester offered me more. Coventry as well. And it, so there was loads of clubs that offered me loads so why more. did you choose Borough? Southgate. I just felt comfortable with him. And, um, I knew a couple of lads there. I felt a club that got the training ground, lovely, I think, yeah, that's yeah. involved. And I thought, yeah, it's a good club to be at. And I mean, it was a good move for me. 
Did you see him getting the sack at all? You know, he got the sack. We we second in the league, like point off Newcastle. We played Derby. I think Derby at home. We've won three one. Managers said, "Well done, lads. Um, go and enjoy yourselves tonight. Um, see you Thursday." So we've all gone to Yarm. Uh, gone for a few drinks and blah, blah, blah. then everyone's phone starts pinging off. The Kefas been sacked. I said, "What?" We all got. We found out that way. And then the next day, we've all sent him a message or called him. I spoke to him. Or he's, he, or he's called you just to say, "Yeah, that he's, he's been sacked." And blah blah blah. The reasons behind that, I have no clue. Gordon Strachan coming? Are you just yeah. turned down? I didn't turn him down. I just turned the club, the club yeah. down. So, but you think when he comes in, you're thinking. At least this fellow wanted to sign us. Yeah. At least he's, not, he's going to like us. Yeah, I thought he was going to be all right, but he came in totally different to how I thought it would be. You know, normally a manager, new, well, I don't know your experience here, but when a new manager comes, he normally gets everyone in the room and has a conversation with the whole squad and like fresh start for everyone, blah, blah, blah. He only spoke to me, Gary O'Neill and Adam Johnson. Didn't have a group conversation. He was harsh on so many players. I remember Andrew Taylor, left back. He was on him so much. I don't know. And he said to him personally, because Tails told us all, he said, his manager said to me, how are you on this money? And he's, he's replied to him, I played every game for the last four years in the Premier League. So he wasn't happy about his wages. Um, a couple of other lads, Mark Yates, who came in, I've never seen a player being... It'd be bullying now. Winger, yeah, Mark Yates. Mark Yates, yeah, Irish lad. Yeah, yeah, good lad as well, great lad. And I hear me abused him every day. Every time he done something wrong in training, he would stop the, the session and blah blah, blah 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 blah, just on him. It got so bad. We played Newcastle where we lost two nil. Um, I mean, we scored the second. I'm got in the change room. He's going mad, screaming, blah, 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 and you, and you, and you, Yates, why didn't you stop the flipping cross, blah, 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 going mad, his face gone red, and it's up steaming. Yates is gone. Why ain't even on the fucking pitch? <laughs> it was slub. He's got up and walked off. He's got, he hated it. Yeah, um, the manager's got up and walked off because he's blaming him for something. He wasn't even on the pitch. <laughs> Come um, on, God. We, we, yeah. we all looked back and went, yeah, yes, he was sub. He wasn't <laughs> even on the pitch. Like, blaming him for the second goal. He wasn't even on the pitch. But I think he came in from being in the Champions League with Celtic and getting them to the last 16. So he had a bit of an ego in there. <laughs> so he brought in all the lads from there and a couple of the Rangers players and just divided the change room. I was going to yeah, say, was it us and them? In, didn't they? Huh? Was, it, was it a case of us and them? Yeah, they feel a bit just like divided that? it. They sat over there. But it's the fetch money on some big money and all that. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, well, I think that most of the lads are on good money anyway, mm. but their money doubled yeah. compared to what they were up there, on up there. And um, yeah, the change room, you just divided, man. All the lads are there before, one side, the new lads was all together. And um, yeah, he came in with us second in the league, Point off top, we, fell, we finished just outside relegation. So Jesus, yeah. You remember so, the because we were pressed him when St Ledger signed, and he, he couldn't get back quick enough. He, yeah. It was the, it was done. It was a done deal. Oh, to sign in the January. Well, he's got to sign permanent. Yeah, yeah. It was, was, uh, it was horrible. It was horrible. Like, is I don't know. You, you maybe have to say that he probably tell you what he's thinking. I tell you, it was like he had. He was upset about something. I don't know. Just like so negative and shouting and moaning and just really bad for the lads. You know what I mean? So because we were quite close together and stuff like that and he, he weren't having none of it. Just an angry little ginger Scott, you think? <laughs> I don't know what it is. He's just an angry little man, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's not the worst thing he did. The worst thing he did his first full season, we finished the league and uh, just outside relegation, Gave us two weeks off, and we had to meet up in uh, Malaga for pre pre season. Pre pre season, train with the army carrying logs up these hills and waters, uh, water bottles in a wheelbarrow uphill and all this, swimming in the sea, freezing, like doing all this. You want to by the beach? You want to be chilling at that point? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> everyone's here. Has anyone who don't turn up is two weeks wages fine. Um, so everyone turned up apart from, I think, Julio Arca. He goes back to Argentina. So it's, it's, he's here all year. So he's like, I'm not coming back. No, he didn't come back one, no chance. And um, I think I might be taking it. I, I mean, I've took a lot of two weeks over the, the years. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the two weeks I'm taking. That. Yeah, but with the way he was, everyone thought he'll be he'll try and get you out if you don't turn up. So we, we'll, 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 no one was happy about that. Probably, I've never had a manager do that. I've never had a manager do that. So, like after that, I never ever seen anything like it. It's like he's trying to punish us for something. Like, are we with the logs and the water and? Yeah, I've done it. Just done it. Yeah, done it. Done it. I've done it. Just got on with it, but. Yeah, it's just something you don't want to be doing at that time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because they'll beat you, Malaga, the but they're not people, just no, some bit. No, no, no. no. Just, <laughs> just on their own. No, it was, a, it was like um, a, a football, they had like football pitches and from the hotel. It wasn't like a holiday. It's like where <laughs> you go for training. And you know, when you do them mid season like camps, yeah. camp, it's one of them. No, nah, it wasn't good, man. But that wasn't a good experience. But yeah, we had to do it. <laughs> you must have been buzzing when he left then, Strachan. Oh yeah, everybody, everybody, lads everybody were, must. Yeah. Oh yeah, we was all happy. Everyone celebrated. <laughs> we went, Night out in your arm, lads. We, we, no, we went um, Tiger, Newcastle. Tiger, is it Tiger, Tiger? Yeah. We went out there um, yeah, it was like, thank God for that, because training, training was a joke. I, even, I enjoy playing for Middlesbrough, um, under Tony Mowbray and um, Southgate anyway. I enjoyed that. I was coming towards the end of my contract and, um, Tony Mowbray's, but he's honest with me. He's like, you got a year left, offer me a new contract, less money. They're trying to get the wage bill down. And he said, if you don't take that, we're going to have to sell you. And then I was like, okay, we'll see what happens. A week later, <laughs> I'm going to Swansea. So that's fair play from him though. Yeah, yeah. He said they got to cut the budget. He didn't, he didn't beat around the bush. He just said, listen, you, you have to sign a new, I want you to stay, but you need to sign a new contract on less money. And I was like, All right, I'll speak to my agent and we'll see what happens. And Swansea came in and they accepted a fee from Swansea because I basically told them I'm not signing a new deal because yeah. another Bosman then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Done my medical and stuff like that. And spoke to Brenda. He's told me I was coming as, as number two. In my head, I was thinking, we'll see about it. I didn't know Danny Graham at the time. I was like, I'm better than him. So I'll get in ahead of him. But when I got there, manager already had his plan of the team and stuff like that. So I didn't work out under the, under him there, so. How was he with you, considering you weren't playing every week? What was your relationship like with him? You know, when you went to see him and what have you, did he keep you sweet? Not really. I th don't think he had like one-on-ones. He, he would talk to you within the group. Like when you were out doing a warm-up or something, he'd have a conversation, how's, how's things, what, you found a place to live and stuff like that, yeah. Not really too much detail, but we where we trained was in a leisure centre. So there's people coming in, doing their gym stuff, swimming and blah, blah, blah. We're getting in showers. Someone's moaning about the game on the weekend, blah, blah. So it wasn't our own training ground. It was being built. So, yeah, there was nowhere really. His office was a little little room by the entrance. What were you going to sign on for your 29 pound a month? Till you for me. I got fed up in the end. Um, got to a point to probably, we probably, for me and him probably finished on a bad note because um, I just had enough. And uh, he put me in a team when Danny was injured, played, who was against West Brom the first game. Danny was injured. So our first win, scored in it. Then we had um, Chelsea the next week and literally was boxed in, didn't get no run again. I think I played two games on the spin twice. So mm. scored in two of them and, when you don't score, leave, puts Danny back in, goes back to his, it wasn't the same feeling. So I got fed up of it. And then one time I just disappeared for about a week. <laughs> in you've, upgrade, you've upgraded, yeah, on, your two, upgraded yeah. on your two days, haven't you? I went, where did we go? We had a common move we played. <laughs> but we was off Sunday, Monday. I didn't come back till Friday. Four and off. Head off, head gone, stayed in London. Um, came back in. <laughs> Just stayed in, booked a hotel, just stayed in London so no one could go to my house in London and expect me to be there and knock on my door. <laughs> so I just stayed in London. And on the Friday, um, I've, 
got back, gone back to Swansea, were playing Man United away. I've gone in my track in travel bag, everything. Ready to go. <laughs> well, I think, I th to be fair, Leroy, I think that's a bit promiscuous. That. That's <laughs> hey, optimistic. Hey, I, <laughs> I got <laughs> there. Wrong word again, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit optimistic. Yeah. Optimistic. <laughs> yeah. Depends what you're up to on that <laughs> week off, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and then, literally. Brownie loves you on this one. Isn't he? <laughs> 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 Sorry, mate, I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> Premature. Um, I don't know what I'm thinking. Of. <laughs> you know what you meant, Dan. It's all right. Uh, yeah, and I've just gone in. I've just walked in, and the first thing. To be fair, the lads when I was away, they'd done a chart and um, a spin chart in the physio room. Well, where, where I was, I was talking to a couple of the lads and that. No, even though I didn't tell them where I was, no one knew where I was. I was just in London. And um, they done a chart saying, "Where, where's Leroy?" <laughs> <laughs> percent, there was a five percent chance of me being in Swansea. There was a twenty-five percent chance of me being on the moon. <laughs> they say, I've got in and they said to me Leo the lads have picked the moon there's more chance of you being on the moon than <laughs> <it's one> <laughs> they've had everywhere else in there and, um, oh, the lads are, look, they're cracking up and they're like let's come in I'm like, you alright yeah I was speaking to Gary Monk at the time he was the cap club captain He's just texting me, where are you? I said, oh, I'm all right, mate. He said, you're all right? Yeah, I said, I'm cool. I'll be, I'll be back in soon. And um, yeah, got in, knocked in Brandon. He said, just go, just go, home, mate. Well, because we're traveling that day. Um, I think I went in the gym, done a little bit, and then just went home. Because they're traveling and we're off the weekend, went back to London. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, do you know on, it, like when you sat in your hotel room, are you not like thinking, fuck me, I'm going to get in some rate bother here? I kept myself busy. So I wasn't in the hotel room the whole time. I was just staying in the hotel. But it must be like, when, it, yeah, I felt like crap. Like, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm like, this, is yeah. Not, this is not the way to react no, to not playing. It's gonna get yeah. worse. Yeah. Another day off, Thursday off. Just in a, delaying the inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just I wouldn't advise it. That's not the way to deal with it, no. man. But it's my way of deal, dealing with it. And you know, I don't don't regret it one so bit. How so was I the just reaction when huh? you got back and finally sat down and? Um, Did he find you? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I got in his office, told me, you're on this much money away, blah, blah, you can't be. I was like, yeah, apologies, Gaffey. I just lost my head like a little bit. I bet the fact that you've turned up in your tracksuit and your wash bag yeah, ready, yeah, ready to go. go. Yeah. The van. Fucking hell. What are you, what, what's he expecting here to be on bench tomorrow? Yeah. Have you seen him? Yeah, he's, like, he's, he's like, like, on his track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that point of view, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> As if nothing's just yeah. happened though. Just More lads, put, not in. To, to kit, man. Put them in, skip, big yeah. and chuck it in your boots. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, funny. But he left. I think there was only a couple of games left that season. Then he left. Um, he went to Liverpool after that, so. And what but, did you think when he left? Did you, were you, had you had enough at Swansea? No, my new manager. I like the, the club. The people, yeah, the people in the club were brilliant. Um, Susan? Oh, the kit lady, yeah, yeah, she's ledge. Like, they made you feel like, you know what I mean, everyone's quite close. And the, even the chairman watched training every day and stuff yeah. like that. So everyone's pretty close and you got on with everyone. And it's, people from Swansea are lovely people, you know what I mean? I thought, new manager coming in, Michael Aldrich, he liked me to be fair when I came in. And um, when I came in, when he when he came in, <laughs> when After he came in, he liked me. Put me back in the squad. We went to America for preseason, involved in everything like that. Yeah, it's, it's just got frustrating. And went <laughs> Birmingham. Yeah, I went Birmingham with Clark Lee, Lee Clark. Yeah, yeah, Lee Clark. Um, and I, after I got there, it was, it was just a mess. Like just the way he treated players, especially the young players, is really bad to the young players. And I didn't enjoy it one bit. So at the end of it, I just said, I had a fallout with Derek Fazaki. Oh, the yeah, sister, yeah. Is, you know, you know what I mean? I don't know his surname. Him. And then after that, I didn't go back in. And then, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> didn't, go back, didn't go back. I was getting fed up of this. Like, <laughs> Seriously, I was getting, <laughs> just getting fed up with this. Give Wally a run for his money. It's just a mess. And uh, I was living in the Cube and that, uh, um, Birmingham Town Centre. 
I used to see all the manager and the, what, doing what they're doing downstairs in the restaurant. And um, I just said to my agent, I'm not going back there. He said, look, come on, Leroy, you've got to go back. And they, <laughs> Again, they, Leroy. He said, they want, you to, they want you to sign permanently in, in um, January. I said, yeah, I'm not signing for them, blah, blah, blah. So I, was, I said I was injured, went back to Swansea. Um, about two days later, I was back at Swansea and on the bench for the game. So all the Birmingham fans <laughs> knew I weren't injured. <laughs> so they, they were asking, what's happening? He's had a fall out of the man. Yeah, like, getting loads of tweets and stuff like that. And, uh, so, well, you're not injured. You were on the bench yesterday. I was like, yeah, I, I feel better now. <laughs> what was that story Danny told us? I was going to say, you mentioned Danny a few times, so we, we need to sort this story out. Go on. Because Danny said, did, I mean, we've heard money, we've heard a TV going out the, is it out the hotel window or? Apartment window. Apartment window. So one night, well, I've gone round to Danny's and we've ordered pizza and that, just chilling, socialising, everything like that. And we had a few drinks and that. And I've, I've just, I think I've round house his TV, so I broke it. Next day, I went and bought him a new one. So I've gone to Curry's, got a new one. He's come round to my apartment and he's, 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 he's got me back, broke my TV, um, smashed it up, whatever. We've gone to Curry's another day. He's got me a new one. And then one time, I'm really pissed off with my mate. If yeah. I accidentally break his TV and he comes around and goes, no, 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 got your back. It wasn't, it wasn't an accident. He round out still. Oh, you round out Oh, yeah. Wait, that's not an accident. Just training with his jiu jitsu or whatever it is, fucking girl. I'm pizza and heard a lot. Don't worry. It wasn't <laughs> was an accident. And then it just got a hand in. Every time we come around to each other's house, apartments, we break his TV. I've done a couple of these, he'd done a few of mine. And then I don't like that game, man. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be yeah. playing that. TV the, ruler. The, honestly, the coverage people are like, what again? <laughs> <laughs> they so like, just literally just go in and break each other's TVs. Yeah, just something. But the worst thing, the best thing, funniest thing I thought is come round, not not touch your TV. We've had a good night. He's I've gone to sleep. I say I'm going to sleep. That he says I'm staying here. Stay stayed in my front room. I don't know what he's doing. And then I've woke up in the morning, gone in the front room, in the kitchen area, anything like that. Every single thing is upside down. The fridge doors pulled off, the freezers pulled off, um, my, my door to, the, to get outside, that's pulled off. Everything's just, the, the, the sofa and everything like that, he's pulled it so neatly, by the way, pull it back all neatly, but the fridge and that just pulled it off, pulled it off, <laughs> toasters, Plugs off, and I was just like, I probably should have gone sleep after he left. Because you know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> then I couldn't find my keys. Couldn't find my keys. So I was thinking, I can't bother to call a locksmith to get a new locker. But I think there was only two people in the building at the time. Um, Michael Aldrich was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> the manager. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then. About a week later, no keys. I've just left my door open because no one bothers you in the marina there. I thought I'd be all right. I'll find them. I've gone in because you can lock it from the inside. I've locked it inside. All I've heard is, sh -sh 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 -sh. he's got my fucking keys. <laughs> he's had them the whole time. <laughs> like, so I don't know what he's been doing. He's had them the whole time and he knew it as well because they were on his batch. <laughs> <laughs> no, <he's not>. yeah. <laughs> the thing is, he must have been like half getting frustrated thinking. You know, what are these keys? He's not, he's not, he's not saying he's not biting his keys. Yeah. He's not biting, he's not biting. <laughs> he's so petty, isn't Smash he? Smash everything up. I got in trouble for it. And I think the club got hold of that story, but they called us both. I took the blame because he's about to move to Sunderland. So about a day before they were speaking to us about it, I said, no, nah, no, nah, it's me, it's me, because I already knew he was getting a move. I took, took that one for him, though. Yeah. <laughs> it was me. Oh, so, I did them all. I did all the oh, TVs. I even brought my own telly. So <laughs> I was like, I was like, off you pop, I might get a squeeze now. But, yeah. <laughs> my, my time was done after that. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> so you eventually signed back for Danny Wilson at Barnsley. At the big oh, club. Yeah. I had a few offers abroad and that. I was thinking I'll get a championship club and I didn't get one. No, no people was like, and they must have heard about CVs and stuff like that. But, <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the missing training for Manager two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, them streamer, they heard all that. And then yeah, that, that's the realism. Oh, they heard all that. And so they weren't sure. Because I, I was only 29 at the time as well. So... Danny's rang me up and he said, all right, what are you doing? Get yourself. 
good, let's get a deal done, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I've played for Danny. I, like, I got on well with him and I've gone up there, I've signed. And then, uh, you're from Barnsley, aren't you? Be very careful what you're saying. Yeah. I know you're into that jiu-jitsu. I, I, got, I got there and I thought, what is this place? <laughs> <laughs> like, because I've drove into the stadium and uh, they put me in a hotel, like, out of the way a bit. So I've not seen much. So I've gone into the centre and I was just like, what am I doing here? Like, what is this place? And then within the club, at the time, League One at the time when I was there, you played there on the champ. Mm. Yeah. And it was so dead. Like, there was more, like, I always said, there's, there was more life in the cemetery. So I didn't enjoy it. I was driving back to London most of the time and going home. Because yeah. I, I ended up living in um, Sheffield. Because... um it's a nicer city. <laughs> <laughs> There's more to do there. You know what I mean? So, in response, happy. John? Did you have a night out in Barnsley or not? No, no. <laughs> no, not it's once. It's now, by the way. It's better than Sheffield. Is it? Yeah. Not once. No one. They even think about it. <laughs> no, they even think about it. I was like, there's no way I'm living here. I said, we've got an apartment for you in Barnes. I said, no, 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 no. Sheffield or Leeds. I was going to live in Sheffield or Leeds. I've got one in Sheffield. You went, you went abroad a few times. Greece. Greece, yeah. yeah. Mixed things about getting mm. paid. They don't, they don't go there. <laughs> now, they got there. Um, they pay the fans to be at the airport to shout your name and blah, blah. Try and press the other side. I could see it all going wrong from the start. I'm like, we're in Crete, yeah? Crete's an island. I'm thinking, how are we getting to the away games? Because most of the teams are in Athens and other side. Mainland. Yeah, yeah. mainland. And they say, oh, yeah, 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 we fly to all the away games. I was like, cool, cool, cool. Look, got the shirt. I said, oh, <coughs> what's the sponsor? They said, um, it's a boat company. <laughs> yeah, boat company. I, I read the script straight away. <laughs> straight away. So, so you got a big boat company sponsor. So good, good at all that. It's the main boat company in Greece. So first away game. Yep. Yeah. Are we getting there? Yeah, we're getting on the on the boat. Nine hours on nine nine hours on ten hours on the boat, and then another nine hours or whatever. Some of the games uh, on the coach. All far like ridiculous, like, but that wasn't the worst part. I didn't mind the tra traveling because you get to see different parts of Greece and that. The main part is the games. I was sitting down, um, one of the like what second home game or something like that, and the president's come in. Never comes in before a game. Never came before. Comes in before. Starts talking in Greece, shouting blah blah blah, malaka this, malaka that, blah blah. And I went to the, the, the Greek guy, um, Greek player next to me. I went. What's he said? He said, um, nobody tackle. Give away as many corners as you can. And um, we got to lose by at least five. That's what he said. I said, yeah. he's got his English wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's losing the plot. First ball's gone over the top. It's going out for a goal kick for us. Our centre half sprinting to smash it out for a corner. So was it? Then he just carried on through the game, carried on, and we lost the game six, something like that. All right, maybe it's just a one-off thing. It happened over and over and over, and I just got fed over, fed up of it. And then he weren't paying some of the players, so some of the the mainland, the ones that live in mainland, they were just going to go back home, so we wouldn't have a team. So I had to pay for some of the players to to pay their apartment just to keep them there, so we got a team, and then. He, he had a fight with another president from another club, I had, like a fist fight. It was all in the paper and you could, they got pictures of them punching each other, everything like that. And then he pulled a gun on another um, president, another game. So he, he was he's in the process of getting banned. So everything went tits up at the club and uh, I had enough of it after, but what, I left in February. I was gone. And I just thought, I'd get myself out of it. And, bef and he's banned from football now, that guy, I think. So, okay. Would there be a lot of fans there? Away games, we only got about 4,000. 
Uh-huh. The stadium has shown me weren't the one we played at. That wasn't it. It's just uh, the one, the one the they took me to. Yeah. And then, it's behind it's like, that one. It's like here at Runeaton, but they've shown you fucking Aston Villa's yeah, ground. Yeah, the one, the one we played at is not the one they showed me. I promise you. Was, I was like, wow, really. What about Thailand? What was that like? Good experience. Very good. Yeah, very good. I enjoyed it there. Like. So enjoying football again and seeing, you know, different, you know, I mean, different, it's different culture, different it? culture, really good. They're really nice people as well. But I wasn't in like Bangkok or Phuket or anything. I was in Sisiket, like real tiny. Let's say rural. Being in Barnsley, <laughs> but not being in Barnsley with a lot more yeah, and sunshine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, sun, the sunshine yeah. helps. The sunshine definitely yeah. helps. So, where the mad, if you've been to Thailand, Bangkok's madness. You know, Never been. You know, you know, then Bangkok, then it's just a nightmare. Like, it's all humid and everything's rushed and traffic and a bit mad. Players are technically all right, good people. It's a Buddhist country, so. Everyone's really polite and respectful and mm. yeah, so I enjoyed it there. And I was gonna stay for another year, but it was just that time I thought I'm trying to come home, come home and get something at home and it didn't happen, so I just called it a day from mm. there. Who was it that brought loads of cash back from Thailand? Well, then got caught. Andy Keo. Andy Keo. No, did he take it to here or did he take it to Australia? Took it to Australia. Took, yeah, I went to Australia. Yeah, you can't go from take it out of Thailand. They'll stop you at airport. No, he did, didn't he? he? Did, he did a, got it got fucking, it. you know, with the old uh, masking tape. <laughs> Bulletproof vest. <laughs> That's risky, that. To be fair, he'll have to give him all that just to let him carry on with his trip. So if he got caught, that's what he'd have to do. So fair play to him. Who was the best manager you played for? Couple. 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 Easily couple. Uh, Steve Couple's a um, good man, I think. Like, learned loads from him. Um, and he's good to you. And he's just, he got to know your personality um, before the football and res- respected everyone for who they are and where they're from. You think it'd be a given though, wouldn't you? That? Just, no, just it's not though, is it? No, but, mm-hmm. you, but you would think yeah. it would just be <clears throat> respectful to people as, as mm-hmm. human beings and well, you, grown men. It's not a given because you come across some bad ones, you know what I mean? They don't really, they just want their results and that's all that matters. They don't care how bad they make you feel or uh, look and so yeah, so best player you played with, most talented I've seen is that Ravel Morrison. I think I mean everybody mentions his name. I just mm. think it's tragic me that I'm real. He's at Birmingham when I most talented. I swear I'd say him because I, I, I didn't see his 18 year old boy sit and grow men's men down on the floor in training. I said to him, "Where you on loan from?" He said. Man United you know, said, I thought somewhere else because you're not a Birmingham player. <laughs> <laughs> Too good to be a good Birmingham player. Was I mean, he doing it in games? It, it, or yeah, just training? Yeah, no, he's doing it in games. <laughs> in the games, you've got to leave him alone mm. because he's that special. He'll open up something, something out of nothing, taking on players, putting pressure on him, coming out of the ball and I don't know, nutmegging you, twisting your legs up and ruining your ACLs, <laughs> like doing everything. Like, and just he got too much of that in the game on him because he's a young lad as well. Mm. On him, on him, him most talented by far, but uh, the player was tough on. Did you ever regret not playing for Dr. Congo? When I was a Middlesbrough, I got names in the squad, but they didn't call me or tell me. I just found out through my agent and he told me, You're in the squad. I said, I'm not going. I didn't grow up playing football there. I grew up playing football here when I came here, so everything I learned about football was in England. So I felt a bit couldn't because I didn't yeah. know anything about, you know what I mean? So everything I learned about football was here. So my ambition was to go and play for England and stuff like that. So no, nah, it, it came across me, but I never went. If you could relive one moment from your football career again, what would it be? Me and Danny trying to fly the plane. Fly the plane. Yeah, me and Danny. Now that was a Christmas do. We went um, Newcastle with Swansea, and now uh, we had a charter flight back after our, our two day bender, or whatever, in Newcastle. Me and Danny was trying to get. We, we actually got in the cockpit. 
because it's a charter flight. We got in and the lads already had a couple of lads. Oh, you two stop messing around. This ain't no fucking joke, blah, blah, blah. Midair? Yeah, yeah, it was in here. <laughs> you really? <laughs> yeah, it was in here. It was in here. It was up there. So, <laughs> yeah, it was up there. Because uh, we, then the lads, a couple of the other lads, the Spanish lads got a bit serious. So we sat <laughs> down. Connor. Yeah, we sat down. <laughs> And yeah, that now nah. what relive um and like score that goal at, at Stamford Bridge again. No, nah, I still I still get that feeling scoring yeah. now. It doesn't matter where it is. You know what I mean? So um no, nah, not really. I wouldn't relive it. Wanna relive it again. I wouldn't want to go through it all again. It just sounds tiring, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking, ain't it? It's You're tiring. in all four corners of the pitch, oh. aren't you? When you celebrate it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's thing going over now, nah, reliving all any of it, guy, it's tiring because the come up is hard work and yeah. stay, staying there for a number of years is hard work. And yeah, so I'm, I'm grateful. Anything you do different? Nah. Do it all the same? Yeah. In my, my generation, I wouldn't, you couldn't, if a player did that now, oof, you, yeah, I've, you'd be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't change him. I wouldn't change a thing. I think I did things my own way. I didn't have any favors. It takes a certain mindset though to be, do you know what? I am just doing it my way. I'm, I'm going to sit at home and they're rapping on the door and you know, you piss me off. I'm not coming out. And they're in fruit letterbox. Leroy, we know you're in there. Yeah, yeah but like, I, mean, I wasn't most, I, I wasn't just saying I'm going to accept that and be like everyone else and just get on with it. It was yeah. out of order. Like nowadays it's stuff people get in trouble for, a lot less. Yeah. Than, like, it's, it's not acceptable. It is, why should I have, to, I have to accept that? You know what I mean? Being left out of the team, yeah, you have to accept that and deal with that different, mm. yeah, 100%. Because, how are you being treated? Yeah, yeah, just how you're being treated and how you're being made to feel. And Because it got to a point where the, the manager, Steve Hobble, had to start coming out in the press saying stuff about me where it, that's, I know that's not him because he's never done that. You know what I mean? And that's pressure from the club. Mm. You know what I mean? Because the fans are asking, well, we've got Lee, well, why aren't he playing? Why aren't we using him? Blah, blah, blah. So that, that side of it, I understood his position. And But as I said, they were dealing that stuff, not playing, not being in the squad or whatever. To, yeah, 100% you deal with that differently. But I don't regret it because it's how I felt at the time. Because it's admirable mm. um, in a way that you've you've got that that honour, if you will. Yeah, but, I think. But in the same way, it's probably had a negative effect on your career. Oh, of course it has. Of course it has. But I'll take that. You yeah. know what I mean? Because Stay I can live with myself. To... Yeah, I can live with myself then. But if I start doing what they want me to be a puppet or something like that, I'm not going to, I'm not a puppet. Mm. So I'm not really going to go down that road. I'm, you know, I'm respectful to someone <laughs> disrespectful to me. So, and uh, that's how everyone should be. And I'm, I mean, all the best tomorrow against uh, Royston. Royston. And if you score, if you only score two, you can always say you scored three. It's mm -hmm. always a promiscuous way to go as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might have had a sticky episode there, lad. <laughs> Couple of words and here and that there. But... <laughs> Bit editing going on there. <laughs> no, but top man, mate. Thank yeah, you very much. If you're feeling ill, you can always go and see Dr. Congo as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, isn't it? Prick. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Mr. Leroy Lita. Enjoy it? Yeah. I tell you what, it's different different to what I thought it'd be like. Yeah? Yeah. Softly spoken. So, yeah. I think that's what uh, the overriding thing that comes across. What were you expecting? Uh, I'm not sure, but I wasn't expecting him to have a, such a quiet voice. I reckon that's voice. the overriding thing for most people that see him. Were you expecting a Leon Knight? I saw Knight? Lee Roy yesterday, very softly spoken. <laughs> a Leon Knight kind of energy? Uh, yeah, possibly. We're, we're in, uh, where we're are we? Windsor. Near Windsor. Fucking lovely gaff this and all, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. This is your... We're in the Airbnb again. Number one? My favourite. Number one. Location. So far. Bedroom each. Bedroom each. Good. Yes. Three double There's beds. funny noises coming out of that room of yours. Eh? Some funny noises. Why is that always funny noises? Well, farting. Well, there's trumping, there's that kind of noise. I don't know <laughs> what, what about that is. his quote when we arrived, walking up the stairs. If somebody jumps in that double bed, I'll pull your head off your shoulders. 
Because <laughs> I knew there were, I knew there were at least two double beds, and I drove down three double beds. There is. I know. That, that, we didn't know that, did we? Yeah. Uh, but I would, I would have been swinging. So we've been uh, in comfort. Lovely, isn't it? Mm. I mean, we've had a couple of recordings, in, haven't we? So three. Yeah. yeah. Davy Bassett. Yeah. Simon. Your mate. Garner. Simon Garner. And John, John Gregory. Gregory. Tell you what, it does need addressing in this corporation. Phones going off mid recording. <laughs> Professional out yesterday. Once, once. Twice your alarm went off. It was yesterday. constant yesterday. No, it hold was. on a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It went off you, once. So twice. Just alarm. a minute. Like, I hit the button, but I hit the snooze button. Uh, yeah. So it did it go off twice? Well, it did go off twice. Well, it, then. It only, that, that specific alarm only went and off. And a ring. There were a ring as well. I didn't have a ring. It ran. <laughs> Oh, Dave! <laughs> oh, we'll let Dave off. We'll let, we'll let Dave off. Uh, but yeah, it needs addressing. Well, you've just addressed it. The alarm went off once. Twice. Hell. Nah, I kept going texts and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then either. you had the audacity. I had my cup on there. As we had a break, you went, poor cup placement. <laughs> His phone had been going off nonstop for the last hour and a half. I, well, I apologise then. One second. Quick guess the lead singer. Of this, just mute her. Just carry on. It's gonna cost a fortune in um, copyright. Clause, oh shit! It? Yeah, even though the sound's off. Well, I'll be sending the. I'll be sending <laughs> this listeners' <laughs> feeds. <laughs> Cardinal Saviour, a um, stranger. What else was I gonna say? Do you know what did? Um, I mean, it's a. I suppose it's a back backhanded compliment. Somebody was describing our podcast, and there was like a full newspaper review about it that it was his favorite ones that he went right. through and it described it as oh yeah they got loads of lads on from the lower leagues that nobody's ever heard of and it's absolutely brilliant which is obviously he's been kind but but we've had some fucking big hitters on it we yeah lads have played 500 premier, premier league, league winners yes. like stewie downen carlton mm. but when was this uh, well, was it like a fresh couple, of, couple of weeks but had lads on from the lower leagues that nobody's ever heard of. Well, so we'll take, do. take that, but take that, but he's missed out the the big hitters as well. International managers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a bit harsh, that yeah. You, you, <laughs> you're part of this conversation, but you're looking at the telly. I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why is my music video <laughs> being played on the screen? The good old days. Um we went to the gym yesterday. Mm. Yeah. We I used a guest pass. What a waste of What a of waste a of class. fucking time that was. Three games of Candy Crush you played on a mat. Nah, <laughs> boggle. Boggle. Three, I was struggling. Flying with them. Boggle. How much, how much of them guest passes? I know that. I think if you buy them, they're 20, 20 on quid, but they were free ones, so we used them. Gutted, you went without me again too early. And I think for the first time ever on these trips, that was up first. Yeah, this morning. we all had a lion this morning. I think it all got. Got the better of us, caught up with us. But the research was done, wasn't it? You'd been yeah. proactive as you are. Research was done. Yeah. Do you know what as well? You two had gone out. It were a fucking state in that kitchen, right? I've, I've been tapping out research as quick as I could. Sent it to you. So you you went to the shop, didn't you? And got, got us our lunch. Got us, um, got it printed from the printers. He fucking sat there on his phone. Fucking sla slabs are out. Two pasties are up on thing. And he's just like this on his phone. F kitchen's upside down. John Gregory's due in five minutes. <laughs> I'm fucking running around like Megan Aggie. <laughs> <laughs> That's just dumb thing. <laughs> I think I cleaned There's up. fucking oh. noodles in bottom of sink and he all sorts. He rinsed the plates I, last night. I cleaned night. up last night, mate. <laughs> you left all shit it in It was sink. a team effort. You did the plates. You didn't do anything, Matty. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good Chinese, by the way. Better Very than good. Thai, wasn't yeah. it? Very good. But yeah, I wouldn't that's... recommend the maiden head, David Lloyd. Sorry if that offends anybody, but... No. As a guest, no tennis courts. Right. <laughs> Yeah, oh, fuck no, God. didn't even oh, have a tennis oh, racket. Oh, because <laughs> you are known as the old fucking Leeds Pete Sampras, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> what, no cafe. No, well, there was a cafe, but it was yeah. no hot food. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, what a waste. I lay it on a foam roller as a pillow, <laughs> played three games of Boggle, Boggle, and went and got a coffee. So are you doing? You know, doing loads of work when you go to the gym. Then we well, normally do. Me and Matt, we did a good workout one time. We were dripping. He's on Boggle. 
You did a six minute sprint. Matty did 5k. And didn't have a shower until 10 o'clock last night. <laughs> what speed are you on when you're doing your sprint? 16. Is me. My routine is speed. I don't know. I can't. I don't know what it equates to, but I do three mile, one mile on 12, and then put my song on. Eye contact in the mirror. Speed 16. Here's one for you. Just go. Do you know when we uh, when I went at Hull and Phil Parkinson came in? So he came in over the summer and we got sent a session to do on the treadmill. Yeah. Right? And it was four minutes on, two minutes off, on a three incline, right? And we had to be at 18. 18? Eight. That's, a, that's a proper sprint, mm -hmm. isn't it? 18. Uphill and all. Yeah. Four minutes on, two minutes off. How many? Four of. How would you get on? I didn't do it. <laughs> of course I didn't do it. It was summer. I wasn't doing it. But oh, you were supposed to be doing this during summer? On the off season, that's what we yeah. got sent by right. the, the fitness coach who we fetched in. So if anybody wants to try that, level three incline. I, I might give it a go. Level three incline. Don't, because you'll be, you'll be off. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be fucking next <laughs> to be, I did notice yesterday in between me boggle games that you were hanging on to the front. <laughs> 16 was too quick to, for you, man. I had to, oh, I had to hold on to turn it down. And he oh, weren't like, oh, I rolled it on. When he's just, when he's just like that, his, his legs were just off he the was, treadmill. Just big red head, panicking. Fuck, Fuck off. off. So try that one. Hold on to take it down. But F Four of, four minutes on, two minutes off, level 18. Mm, we'll give it a so go. give it a go and see how you, and I'm telling you, you're getting thrown off back. Yeah. What yeah. was your song? What's your go-to song at the minute? Um, for what for I'm running? Um... The greatest, uh, what's it called? The, the greatest, greatest showman. showman. Yeah. <laughs> this is you. <laughs> and you said you look yourself in the mirror. Yeah. It's got a good beat to it. I, well, I, uh, Juno had it on it. My daughter had it on it car. And I thought, oh, this has got a beat to it. I could run to this. <sighs> what was your one before that? <laughs> Break eye contact. <laughs> yeah. That one. Oh, we had a live show. Blackpool. Uh, Blackpool. Blackpool. Thanks to everybody show. who came. Yeah. Another good, I like that place. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Do you feel like a? I feel like the greatest showman while I'm up there. It's a, it's a, it's a proper cabaret mm -hmm. venue, isn't it? Yeah. It's I a, think we, well, I don't know if we've signed up or we've been signed up to do another one next year. Yeah, we? I believe so. I believe so. So um, they are the good nights there. And we've got Wrexham coming up on Friday. I so, spoke to my mate who'd seen him live recently, Glenn Little, and he said he's very, top very notch. good. I've heard he's really good. Have you yeah. heard that as well? Yeah. I Yo, think you've heard it. Were, it's a conversation. That heard... was my conversation, actually. I told you. <laughs> Listen, you've heard it from the same source. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, looking forward to Wrexham. That Mahelm is going to be here, whatever he's called. What are the owners oh, he's called? coming down, isn't he? Reynolds, is it? Yeah. Reynolds and we'll Mahelm is going to be here. Yeah. My trainers are getting a bit of stick this trip. These ones? What did you say, Matty? Eh? Reminders of... Ghostbuster. Yeah, the Marshmallow Man. Marshmallow. Stay Puff Marshmallow. It's a big soul on them, isn't there? I know. Probably too big. Making up but for I the should see he's running them. Internally. That Are they running that one? in speed. Piece no of problem. <laughs> Easy. Won't even have to hold on. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing the comments if anybody's tried it. That. Oh, I tell you what, new stat for you. I always think there's an ad going when you make that noise. No, no. Oh. I had a look on the YouTube stats. Um, only 30% of viewers of the last video were subscribers. So, calls to, to get angrier. Yeah, that is piss poor, isn't it? Bang that fist. Just say, uh, subscribe. subscribe and we're only 2,000 away from that 100,000. You keep going on all this 100,000, don't you? Just yeah. get fuck. John to 100,000. Yeah. Do I fuck? How many are we on? How many are we on? Text and he'll, all that. He'll knock Candy Crush off. Check our subscribers. Yeah. Back on Candy Crush. After he's changed his clock so we can get a few more lives. A few more credits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you fancy coming down to Wrexham, come on down. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, Patreon, we've not mentioned that for a while. If you're no. not aware of the Patreon, link's in the description on all the videos and on the audio. And then two extra episodes a month. And I can't. I, I, I had a look at that over there, actually, and the list of, like, how many on it is outrageous. Oh, it is outrageous. And you get all the back catalogue. Yeah. £130 worth of Chinese last night, lads. Oh, we had? Yeah, I didn't want to tell you at the time. 
130 it was a, it was quid? A, a big order. What about the, the freebie that they send? <laughs> that's the hell, that's we got a note saying for for for, for your purchase, we're sending you a free free item. That comes so, there. So before we opened tin. it, before we opened it, you're thinking spring rolls, aren't you? Yeah. Minimum. Yeah. Maybe even quarter dollar. Bit of dim sum. Oof, what's a freebie? It's a free 130 quid. <laughs> On a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it was? 130 snotters. Yeah. Four dim fortune cookies. <laughs> Four, you get free anyway. Uh, we had fortune cookies, but they put three more in a foil tin. But, and wrote a note on, just for you guys. <laughs> but please leave a review. <laughs> yeah. He's a freebie. Please leave a review. Your review. You cheeky fr- bastards. <laughs> your fortune cookies up your ass. There's your review. pound fifty each worth of Chinese. We well, had, that, that wasn't split even. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you had your hands in my crispy well, beef, you well. cheeky bastard. Good <laughs> <laughs> up one eye. <laughs> Fuck anyone? off. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I was sat in this very chair. <laughs> what are we ordering? No, I'm not bothered. No. You, you ordering it? And, and, no, I'm not bothered. Fucking hell. It all, but after you said it, it just went quiet. And I know for a fact... We were all thinking the same yeah. thing. He's starving. <laughs> I weren't hungry. <laughs> well, that what? Well, yeah, thirty-two pound fifty is worth. Off. And then it came to yeah. If you order some, I'll have a little bit. And you had a full five courses. No, I didn't. I again, saw you with the again. <laughs> Phone ringing again. <laughs> Can you fucking have an eve? It. You had ribs. You had no, I had flipping. one rib. Ribs, I had one dumplings. Duck, one rib, ribs. one dumpling, <laughs> and then my meal. I never had a dumpling. <laughs> you had <laughs> plenty of dumplings. Can I have a dumpling? <laughs> <laughs> Four <laughs> for free <laughs> fortune cookies. I, won't, I can't catch my breath. Please leave us a review. Oh. Well, thanks for watching once again, and thanks to Fairplay for sponsoring the series. Links in the description if you want to get involved with that free, free bet again this weekend. Get your pals involved. Mm-hmm. And we'll see you next week. Adios. Yeah.